Real show, here we go. Real show, here we go. You know that it's gotta be that time, so this is what we chant. What keeps on getting them all amped in advance? Come on. You and I rocking out with Iron Man, F.E. You get the general's point of view on top of Roger's rants. Whenever it's happening out, we're putting the most minutes in you. Already know what that's about, you know that win is win. Crush whatever's on task, check the podcast. It's the champ and the tramp, let the bomb blast. All right, we rolling? Yeah. What's up, guys? You're here with Champ and the Tramp. We have uh, a friend, actually, a uh, local war hero in today, Mr. Rory Hamill. Um, served in the 2nd Battalion, 8th Infantry, Infantry correct? Yep. Yes, sir. Yep. Um, yeah, so he uh, he's a local guy. Friends with um, a buddy of mine, Jesse. Actually, Jesse took you on a skydive, yep. correct? Part of his charity. Yep. You also do uh, motivational speaking. Um you want to tell us a little bit about your story and you served in <laughs> Iraq and Afghanistan, Afghanistan yeah. correct? Yeah, for uh, a total of three deployments. Um, I mean, shit, where do you want me to start? <laughs> well, well, uh, well, I'll start from how, 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 how'd you How'd you end I'm, up in, in, I'm, in I'm the military? Yeah, kindergarten, maybe start with kindergarten. Yeah. <laughs> kindergarten, I actually got in a fist fight, but no, um, I uh, I grew up in Brick, New Jersey, and I had like a, a fairly you know, tumultuous childhood. Uh, my parents were abusive. There was a lot of stuff that I went through as a kid um, that I didn't realize until I started going to get, uh, you know, uh, therapy and shit for the stuff that I saw in combat. Um, my parents used to lock me in a closet for hours at a time, uh, make me kneel on uncooked rice, all kinds of crazy shit yeah. that a, a lot of people can, can relate to, unfortunately. Um, age of 13, I got raped by an 18-year-old girl. Which I didn't realize until, you know, I, I, I was an adult. Um, but you were eight, she was 13? I, I was 13, she was 18. Oh, 18, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, that was something that had affected me in ways I didn't understand. I started smoking cigarettes at 13, started drinking heavily at 13. Uh, a lot of risk-taking behaviors at 13. I didn't, you know, all the way up until the age of 17 when I got arrested for uh, federal grand larceny. And then got kicked out of Mondon. There's an, over the highway. An, wow. <laughs> There's an incredible well, backstory here that I didn't well, know anything about, bro. I, was, well, yeah, no. I knew about your, you know, obviously some of your military background, your history. I was going to let you, thought that was going to be where you started, but there's, yeah, you started early and that's um, more it's, than interesting, man. So yeah, did a, that parlay into your decision to go into the military at all? Or? Mostly. It did. What, what, no, Grand Larson, that's, uh. that's stealing cars. Is that right? Um, <laughs> no, it was stupid as fuck. I stole uh, I stole laptops Laptop. from oh, yeah. from some of the students at school. Oh wow! And I sold them in Mon uh, at Mondon. Yeah, you, you told me that story actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the reason it was like it, the the feds got involved was because when it was getting sold through eBay, it went to some guy in Hong Kong, so it crossed international oh, boundaries. Wow. The wow. property value was over, I think, like fifteen hundred at the time. And uh, yeah, I got to go into the interview room with my mom and uh, it was it was pretty fucking bad. <laughs> we were under <laughs> eight, you were underage you were, you were 17 under, yeah oh, so that's, that's, with uh, the that's FBI. a good thing no the they passed it off to the locals uh, because it was like a slam dunk gotcha. it, there wasn't like any need to like investigate and, yeah and they so, had my license plate in the picture on the ebay pictures so they were like uh, yeah it's you you were minor mm -hmm. so did they sometimes they they let you off the hook if you enlist correct was that part yeah of that, so i had already um i had already made you know, started the paperwork and all the process. I'd actually sworn in uh, to go to Paris Island to join the Marine Corps. So after that happened, I got my ass ripped apart by the recruiters and everything like that. I had to get a waiver for that. Um, I also had to get a waiver because I was 17 to go to boot camp. Oh, uh, yeah. But I didn't I didn't know what the hell I was doing. Like, I, I was graduating at the age of 17. Um, I had to finish up a brick memorial. I didn't, uh, I didn't even take the SATs. I had no, I had no purpose or direction or drive and i didn't have you know kind of a, a solid family unit mm -hmm. i didn't i didn't know what the no hell one was, was directing you to what yeah, to do i didn't know what to do did you have siblings i had a younger brother and a younger sister did they have similar stories or no nah, i mean they they i mean they have their own issues no. um which would take a <laughs> whole other podcast each to talk about but um they didn't. They didn't quite get it as much as I did because I, I was the oldest. Yep. They got their fair share, but I mean, wow, you know, it was. Uh, you took the brunt of it, though. Yeah, and uh, it's it sounds weird, but I appreciate it now. Yeah. And it's not. It's not because of what they did. You know, it's not. It wasn't their intention 
that you know I appreciate it. It's because of how it screwed made, up it was yeah, right. that I appreciate that experience. Well, it probably made you who you are today, a it's, stronger. It, it's a huge yeah. part of my foundation, and it's a huge part of. I, I try to go the well. I know I do the opposite direction with my kids. Mm-hmm. Like I'm, I'm extremely open. I talk about mental health. I talk about their feelings. Were you always? Because I think a lot of people bury things like that. No, no, absolutely not. Where? I was. Uh, I clammed up, um, especially after this thing uh this was in 2011 oh right nine year anniversary coming up on the 13th correct wow yeah thursday wow Wow. yeah that flew (laughs) nine (laughs) years but let's get to that but you went to uh so you got grand larceny Mm -hmm. and you said you already went to a recruiter so you were kind of in the process about about to go in the military that happened they obviously i guess allowed you to still go go into the military barely barely. (laughs) now when you went in where did you get stationed right away uh, so I went to Paris Island, South Carolina, uh, for basic training, shipped me up to Camp Geiger. I went through school of infantry and then hopped on a, a bus and went over to Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. And that's where I was stationed, um, from 2006 until I got injured in 2011. And then I finished up the rest of my Marine Corps career at Walter Reed, which ironically I was born there. Get out of here. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> no way. Yeah. Wow. So it was like a, a full circle of life. Kind I actually deal. spent the day out in Walter Reed, man. Yeah. It's, it's heavy. It's, uh, yeah, very heavy, man. Now born, born there how? Your father was in the military? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, both of my parents were in the Navy. Oh. My uh, dad was stationed at Fort Meade um, a couple miles down the road. That's okay. in North Carolina, Fort Meade, right? Mm-hmm. Or, Maryland. No, Maryland, okay. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Wow, man, that was heavy, bro. I did not. Uh, oh, we're just getting I almost started. want to give you a hug, <laughs> brother. <laughs> Jesus yeah. Christ. Nah, man, it's, 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 it's really okay. It me a long time to i want to i want to drink do you want to drink i would love a drink <laughs> well, <laughs> After i that. guess the best thing is to talk about it right i mean yeah. really talk, no, well, i'm sure talking about it is uh yeah. is was one way to alleviate the uh the past uh tragedies in, in a way i guess i would think the only other way would be to bury it which so many people do and then you internalize that and you you live in sort of a purgatory for the rest of your life because you have no outlet for it right it almost becomes your yeah. baggage to carry i would i would think I mean, I don't know, but I would think that talking. I, listen, I've had a little bit of adversity, nothing on that level. I mean, everybody talking in, about it helps me for sure. I mean, from what I can tell, everybody in this room has had their own kind of fucking experience with that shit, and it's everyone buries it. You talking yeah. about Frankie's ears? I'm talking about all. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's just everyone. That's just how fucking men are in society. You know, it's just yeah, everybody just buries their fucking shit. Right, men the fuck are up, very different. You know, mm. suck it the fuck up, yeah. and you know, but it doesn't down the road it just manifests in a much worse way and that's what it did with me so you're but you didn't realize all this until you this accident came about like in their process of of, before this accident how was your how was your time in the military time in the military i didn't uh i mean i was shit i was barely old enough to fucking drink yeah when i mean i think it was like 22 going on 23 when i got my leg blown off i didn't i didn't quite realize the you know severity of what i was going through mentally I thought that I, I had this huge fucking chip on my shoulder. I, I was at Walter Reed. I was going through rehab. I'm like, no one can fucking touch me. I just got my leg blown off. Fuck you. Fuck this. Fuck the wall. That's it. I'm going to go out. I'm going to go to PT. I'm going to fucking go to my room, take a shower. I'm going to go out and fucking drink. And we all fucking did that. Like, we, you would see us rolling out in, like, wheelchairs and shit and just getting in fucking fights and dropping thousands of dollars on fucking alcohol man real quick off ca- <laughs> as off, we off, as we <laughs> off camera opening the bottle that's not a guy humping the wall it's uh rory's buddy <laughs> fell he brought in so uh he brought a bottle for us <laughs> crazy yeah, part yeah, is yeah, i thank you i actually yeah. saw phil on a, a post today on instagram yeah, and, I, yeah. and i liked it and he then and, and he Rory comes in, walking in i'm like i said hold up i think i saw you today <laughs> shout out to big splash graphics yeah 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 <laughs> Yeah, um, it wasn't until about 2015 that I actually said, you know what, I think I got a fucking problem. I need to go get some help. I need to go talk to someone. Mm-hmm. And that was after... Whole- so that, their accident happened in 2011, and it took mm-hmm. four years pretty much for you to realize something's up. It, yeah, and that was after trying to... So it, after I got out and I came back home. Um, the In the military, it's kind of... Um, it's kind of a running joke. They have this thing called separation and what is it? Tr- TAPS transition assistance program or something oh, yeah. like that. It's a week long class where they're just like 
do this, do this. Here's how you write a resume. Here's how you wear a fucking suit. Good luck. Bye. And they just kind of kick you out the door. So and they're they just getting you ready f- for regular life, civilian life in no, a sense. That's that's the that's the joke. But they don't. Not, it doesn't don't really know. get you ready at all because you can't you can't process everything that you experienced in the military in a fucking week. Mm, like yeah. it, it just doesn't fucking work like well, that. Not only that, you went in so young, you never really experienced like the workforce or, I mean, you were a kid, but mm-hmm. you never, you never were really out there as an adult into the real world, right? You just got put I mean, into the military yeah. at a very young age. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I mean, I guess you could argue that it, that was like the realest it could have fucking gotten for me. Cause I, as soon as I got to my unit, I got married, I became a dad and I was deployed to Iraq at the age of 18 going on 19. Wow. And I I was just flying by the seat of my fucking pants. Yeah. I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. You know, it was I was just a dumb fucking kid and I didn't uh understand where I was gonna go. I didn't have any goals, I didn't have any drive. Like I was I, I'd show up to work, I'd, you know, go out on field ops and I'd do what I was fucking told, but I didn't know what I was fucking doing. You were following orders. Yeah. And it this was, is before your accident, you're saying. Oh yeah. yeah way, right. way, way before it. But, uh, Where, so so when all right you you did your your uh your what when you go in the military you do what uh, boot camp right yeah and then you get stationed where Camp Lejeune North Carolina okay now did you do anything or any uh, overseas trips at at that time yeah no I, I as soon as I got to my unit we we transitioned and we went to uh, Ramadi which was in the Al Anbar province in Iraq and uh, that was a fairly light deployment we lost one man. Um, we were doing a left seat, right seat. There was a, a dump truck full of explosives. Thank you. Uh, that ran the uh, entry control point. Detonated, killed both of them. Um, they both got Navy crosses posthumously and everything. And, um, and that, that, that's that was a, that's my an first award, award, right? Navy cross is an award. Yeah. It's, uh, uh, so, like in the, in the Marine Corps and the Navy, it's called the Navy Cross. Um, in the Army, it's called the Army Cross. Um, I don't know what Air Force or whatever, but I, it's it's supposed to, it's a step below the Medal of Honor. It's, it's a big fucking deal. But, mm-hmm. uh, after, um, after that deployment came back and started training up what was supposed to be another Iraqi deployment, but wound up being the Afghan deployment in 2009. And that deployment was, was probably the worst shit mentally that I've been through. Second deployment. This is my second deployment. Second yeah. Deployment. It, the, that deployment to me mentally was worse than my third deployment where I got my leg blown off. Really? Now, how long are, is it a, deploy- a deployment you typically? Are they all different? <clears throat> so, for us, it was a total of seven months. So, like, it's basically like a month going out, um, acclimating to the environment, and then you do, like, five months of heavy, intensive shit. Um, they usually put us in, like, a really bad area, and then we do a left seat, right seat with the incoming uh, infantry unit. And get what, out of there. what does that mean exactly? Left seat, red seat. Um, we call it a relief in place. So you, you'll go out. The people that have been there, that have been living in the area, patrolling the area, will, you know, take out the guys that are just coming in the door, yeah. and kind of instruct them, give them the lay of the land and stuff like that, and tell them what to look out for, uh, who to look out for, where you're possibly going to get shot at, blown up, etc. Gotcha. Um, that, now, uh, it's like your your mission is to just kind of scope the area out. To, you know, is that what it, you're pretty much doing? Making sure, I don't know, whatever. You're, you're passing the baton, Let's essentially. See. Okay. Yeah, and you want to. You obviously want to make sure that they have the right tools, but sometimes, um, like I know the unit that relieved us in 2009, they got fucked up just as much as we did. It's just a bad area. And, and this is Afghanistan. Yeah. How do you, how do you know who your enemy is? I mean, because uh, uh, they you don't know a lot of time well, they you, just blend in. Because, and you're fighting alongside Afghanis, right? As well. Afghan, yeah, we're we're fighting alongside Afghan police, Afghan army. It depend it depended on what mission or what you know objective we were we were going to do, but we were working hand in hand with them. How like, like the regulars, the civilians? What what, what was your uh, how did they look at you guys? Like as like liberators or did they not like you guys? Well, that's a difficult question. Um, we treated them. I know, and it, so uh, it's it varies from unit to unit. You only uh, <laughs> there's an express. What, what's that fucking expression? You can build ten bridges, but if you suck one dick, you're a fucking dick sucker. <laughs> like you can't you can't fucking Mo, walk into Lou, someone's write house. That down. <laughs> <laughs> write that down. You know what I mean? Be, you can't walk into someone's fucking house and be like, "This is what we're doing." You like so we walked in. and We're like, we know you don't fucking want us here. Like, we would be mm. 
popping shots at you like if you came to america and you were patrolling right. like we, we we get it like we had to be here you know let's work together let's figure it the fuck out and that that worked for us and they respected us we respected them we respected their culture even though it was extremely different than ours and we got along. Are you, are you kicking the doors into civilians looking for, yeah. you know, the Taliban? I mean, how, how does that work? Because yeah. uh, Jesse obviously has shared some stories with me, and they, they would go on sweep missions and things like that. But that's what you're doing? You're looking for terrorist cells yeah. and stuff when you're out there? I mean... Intel uh, or... The most I can say, it's it's mostly reactive most of the time. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you, you take, shots. You take fire. You take fire. You, you, you get you blown fire, up. Yeah. And you, you try to, like, contain the situation. Obviously... Yeah, I, I mean, actually, we made it out of that deployment without any civilian casualties, and we lost 14 men, seven were in my company, on that deployment alone. Wow. And, it, it, I mean, we we essentially kind of, like, had our hands tied. We couldn't... I, it, your, our natural reaction was, like, we want to just fucking level the fucking yeah, neighborhood, right, but you can't, right. you can't do that, and that's obviously not the right decision. Even but. airstrikes have to be very strategic, right? They have to so, be... Yeah. So when you said you lost seven guys, you're probably just seven guys you're with... On a daily basis, yeah. Lived and ha- with, ate with, slept with, like it just we we we, they were our brothers, and yeah. that that that's why I said that was the hardest deployment for me, because it it really, as as a fucking a kid, I was still a kid. As a kid, I still, it, it sucked watching some of my best friends go out on patrol, and I'd be back at the base, and then they didn't come back in. Yeah. And that, that really, I, 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 in the moment, I was, like, upset, but I didn't realize just how fucking serious that was. Yeah. You always hear military, a lot of guys say, guys that, that came from, you know, moderate, regular families with, you know, no issues, that, that that becomes their family. For you, did that take on an even bigger role because of your childhood? I mean, were, those literally probably were, felt like your brothers, I mean, you know, in, in almost a family dynamic. That was the first time. More so than a brotherhood yeah. in, in war, you know? That was the first time that I felt like I actually had a family. And it really fucked me up. Um, in that situation, I I didn't know how to process it. I can't imagine. You know? Um, now, obviously, looking back, I can, you know, I can, I can relive the moments in my head. Except that they happened. Yeah, they suck. Yeah, they, they like, it's, it's fucking terrible. Um... But if I want to remember them in a positive way, I got to keep pushing for, I got to keep, I got to live my life in a, in a, in a positive way. And I got to keep achieving shit, at least for them. And yeah. it's, it, I, I can't ever, it's not like a, Oh, if I don't fucking succeed, I'm going to fail. Like, and I'm going to let them fuck. No, it's like, I gotta, I just gotta be happy. I gotta, I gotta help people. I gotta fucking, you know, just be a good fucking human. And that's all I really focus on. Yeah, and honor them in a in a way. I, Let them carry on through through your good actions. Yeah, because if they if they fucking saw me fucking you know, you know, in my worst, they you know they wouldn't like necessarily scold me, but they'd be like, man, come on, yeah, like, get the fuck up. Right. Well, there's no question, man, that PS PTSD is a real thing. We we talked a couple times on a couple different episodes in here about seeing people that we yeah, good stuff. Phil, Ooh, by the way, good mm, stuff. Mommy. What is that? What is that? That is really fucking good. beautiful. What is it? Ooh. Uh, wow smoky yeah. i was gonna say it's got a little smoky yeah. flavor to it good stuff yeah. though. we've talked a few times about seeing death witnessing death oh, yeah. people we didn't know you know mm-hmm. so frankie's been affected you saw a woman drowned i saw a guy die in a car accident people we didn't know i i can't imagine mm-hmm. guys that you slept with every night and 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 bunked with and you know i can't imagine that it's it's got to it's got to have a profound effect. It probably doesn't sink in immediately, I wouldn't think. I would think over time. There's almost too much to process, you know? You could argue that think. with anybody, yeah. with you guys, too. And that's it, that's, it, that's that's probably the biggest thing that I, I talk about anytime I get in front of people is everything is a matter of perspective. Like, what may be the worst fucking thing for me is easy for you. Right, it could yeah. be, eh, mm-hmm. for you, and mm-hmm. vice versa. Like, mm-hmm. you, you can't... Mm-hmm. The, it's like comparing apples to oranges. Everyone's interpretation of their trauma what they see with their own fucking eyes you can't the shit that you guys fucking experience your traumas 
is just as important as anything that I fucking did in combat. It's not, you, I, you know what I mean? Like, it's uh, not, yeah. it's not. Mm, I don't know. There, no, no, <laughs> seriously. Tough, but they're, tough stretch for it, me. It, because it's, you, it's difficult for you guys to deal with in your own fucking ways. And I can't, I can't understand right, Everybody's that. a different gauge that they're dealing with. I, I, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I can't, under, I can't, I'm not you. Yeah. I don't know how you fucking We kind of live in a it, snowflake you know? world, though, today where people freak out about, you know, yeah, Britney no. shaved her head and there's people fucking <laughs> freaking out on the internet, like crying and shit. I mean... Those people weren't destined for war, but you know, you you're you're next level, bro. You saw some real shit, and you know, I, I would also think, and again, you know, we can steer away from this if you want to, but being a father, you know, has got to has got to have a pr- profound effect as well. You you got to be here, bro. You got to be here for your kids. You you know, um, I went through a little bout of depression. Nothing, I'm sure, on the level of what you've experienced, but I mean, that's it. Always came back to I'm a dad. I got kids. I got to be here. I got to be around. Um, I have to, you know, set a positive role model for them, and yeah. So, but I, does speaking help you with that? Doing your no, no. Yeah. now, now it does. Um, that was uh, so like that. That's kind of what I was trying to lead up to. Was in 2012 after I got out and I came back home. Um, after the separation transition program, I didn't, I didn't quite know what I was doing, where I was going, and I wound up finding myself uh, outside my. My dad's house in Marsh. Uh, my dad lived in Margate. And I had my 40 in my lap in my car. And I put it to my head. And I was ready to blow my head off. And I have three kids now. But then I had two. My two kids popped in my head. And as soon as I got that image in my head, I hesitated for half a second. And the gravity of, you know, everything. Where, where I was, what I was doing, just fucking hit me like a tidal wave. And I like popped the slide off. I, st- I took the fucking the mag out. I started popping the rounds out. I was ugly crying. I, 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 I couldn't fucking believe that I almost just did that. But then I just drove back home and I just reassembled the gun, put it in the fucking safe and just, yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't address it. And like I said before, I didn't go and get fucking help until 2015. Mm-hmm. I didn't go say, yeah, I got fucking PTSD. I need some goddamn help. Yep. I need to fucking talk to someone. Right. Like, was there a, an avenue of- like a, 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 an avenue for you to go talk to someone? Did they do like your separation or uh, uh, counseling they ma- made you do? Is like, do they want you to talk to people? Well, they like, say, hey, listen, if you're having these thoughts, you should reach out to this guy. Or there's, is there that guidance for you or no? You have to kind of just do it on PTSD your own. PTSD is such a huge thing. I, would think I know, but it's read. like, I feel like it's still kind of new. I mean, it, I mean, so there are systems in place, uh, very basic stuff to kind of like get people, like get their foot in the fucking door. Mm-hmm. Uh, so to speak, and just like if, yeah, like you can like specialize and like figure it the fuck out and everything like that along the way, but ultimately it's up to the fucking individual. Like you, I mm-hmm. I know like there's constantly there's this there's this wave of veterans that are like, well you know fuck you know fuck fuck the VA all this shit like it, you know they're not helping me whatever, but at the end of the day, it's it's up to the person it's up to the individual to want to get better to want to fucking do something about that shit but do you think the avenues that the VAs are giving do, are the proper I, ones around here at least and that's all you I do. can speak yeah, on okay. I, I mean I go to the the VA clinic okay work. good I'm and, glad, and, I'm and glad that, that and that fucking helps me yeah I should have started this whole thing out I feel like an asshole Why? saying thank you for your service don't yeah that's no, yeah, true truly sure, truly no. I, uh, you'll never find a bigger you, you know really supporter have, I know, of man. our military and our veterans than Frankie and I I'll tell you, like, I, uh, I, I always say there's, you know, I, w- I would love to know. I don't have the balls to go in the military. I, I was Same. chasing wrestling able, and stuff, yeah. but I have so much, almost respect for people that do because, I mean, that's selfless. That's a selfless act. It's, <laughs> you dude, know, I didn't, I, I can't even say that I was doing it for that reason because I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. Yeah, no, I, like, I, I was just like, hey, I'm but a e- dumb e- fucking either kid. way, e- either way, <laughs> however, you, you however, you, however you end up there. Yeah. You know, you, you you didn't bail out. You didn't say, "Hey, I'm gonna get get a dishonorable discharge." You know, you, if you really want to get out, I guess you could. I'm I'm literally the pussy of my family. My my dad served in Korea. He almost went to Vietnam, but he went to Korea. Served in the demilitarized zone. Both grandfathers served in the Pacific World War II. My sister went into the army. She didn't serve overseas or anything, but she was in the army. Mom. And I. I, I'm I'm the bitch of the family. <laughs> oh, naturally, yeah, see, it's, you don't. That's a, you don't have to serve, man. Like you guys are giving back. You're doing something. Like it doesn't. That's uh, I know. You, I know. You, I know where you, you're coming from. Man. You I or do. Carver said it to me. I think the night that we <clears throat> we went out, I forget. It was either you or Carver, Derek Carver, another mm-hmm. combat wounded vet, 
said to me, just because you serve doesn't make you a good person. I remember it's you saying exactly that. exactly right. Yeah, yeah. I know plenty of veterans nah. who are fucking assholes. But <laughs> uh, say, you're, say you're, a, you're a bad person next to a, another bad person that didn't serve, you're a little bit yeah, better. Yeah, you're a little, <laughs> you're better. A little bit better. That's a good way to look at it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, uh, all right. I mean, obviously, that was a traumatic event for you. Can you can you walk us through that day? Do you, do you remember everything? Do you remember, like, the morning, even before it happened? Do, do, do those things stick out? Or uh, I, I yeah. imagine they would, right? Oh, yeah. Um, I actually had to... <laughs> so, the the week leading up to it was, the, the I guess, the rainy season. Um, it's obviously a really dry fucking environment. But um, I remember having to sit there with, like, a... a cracked mop bucket and a fucking empty Lucky Charms cereal bowl scooping water out of our fucking tent before our patrol because everyone's shit was fucking flooded. People were cleaning their fucking weapons real quick trying to make sure that everything was like functioning properly before we went out. And uh, when we went on fucking patrol, um, we got about 800 meters outside uh, the wire, uh, the patrol base that we were on. And we, you know, we were, we were just slogging through knee-high mud we couldn't really fucking move if we got fucking contact we were kind of fucked so we're like you know what let's move over to this compound and kind of like hang out for a bit and see what's going on uh when we got up there there's some fucking local that told us you know there's an id in this compound right over here next to us so um myself and the squad leader looked at each other and we're like hey you want to go get in some trouble and we're like yeah fuck it so we went over, you know, we're a month into the deployment. We're like, let's, let's go fucking prove ourselves and shit. And, you know, really send a message to these assholes. Um, so the squad set up, uh, 360 security around the compounds. Um, took the minesweeper off my appointments back and went in the house and I started sweeping. I got about three quarters of the compound clear and I actually stepped over the, uh, the pressure plate. Um, oh, couple- it's, it was in the house. Oh yeah. Yeah, oh, wow. I mean, there was no roof on it, but it yeah. was a compound. Mm-hmm. Um, it was just walls. Uh, stepped over the pressure plate a couple times, um, and then came back through the doorway after finding a hoax IED. And um, I remember I started to raise it up to try and show uh, my buddy John. And as soon as I, like, raised it up, I just remember feeling the ground sink. And kind of, like, everything just went to a fucking, like, dead stop. And I just remember going, fuck. <laughs> went up 10 feet hit the ground i'm like okay you know my, my lungs I, I this is my seventh time getting blown up and i knew that the oxygen just got ripped out of my lungs so i was like all right wait you know wait 30 seconds your your lungs are going to reinflate you're going to be fine try to stand up in the meantime take a knee you know hold security and i'm doing all the shit that i was fucking trained to do the muscle memory shit and i remember trying to stand up i'm like the fuck is so i'm looking down my kneecaps off to the side my femur's sticking out here. And I remember looking down and going, oh, that's really white. I mean, my fucking femur. And then I was like, holy shit, that's really white. And then I realized, like, my fucking femur is sticking out. And oh, I'm like, man. I dropped my head back and I was like, fuck. <laughs> and then uh, my guys got up to me, uh, started working on me, got tourniquets on me, you know, pressure dressings. And uh, it took about 40, 45 minutes for the the medical evacuation to get there and then uh when i got on the bird i flatlined for two minutes and then got brought back to uh, the shock trauma unit at uh camp bastion in afghanistan and it took about a week for me to get back to um walter reed um you know that they had to wait for me to stabilize and everything like that but uh so for the most part conscious during the actual IED yeah up until I got on the burn wow. it was just the blood loss and they gave me they gave me something that lowered my heart rate too much wow now were you in pain right away or just in shock no the shock i mean the shock set in pretty much right away Instantly, like yeah. yeah you know that goes man like oh. the, the the fucking the shock i started shivering they put a fucking space blanket on me i'm just like like i didn't yeah. I knew what was happening, but well, I was just like, oh. uncontrollably <laughs> twitching, yeah. right? Quite Dude, around. you remember what was going through your head at the time? I mean, it, it bounced around like a fucking, I don't know, like a kangaroo, but I know my kids popped in my head at one point. Um, and then I now, How old were your kids at the time? Ah, oh, fuck. I want to say like four and three. They were wow. really young. Wow. You know, it's and my, 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 my third right wasn't now. even like, you know, in, in my head yet. Oh. There was a, it was, um, when I went, it was, um, 
I don't, I, 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 to this day, I, I don't know how to describe it at all. Um, they say your whole life flashes before you, like, in almost picture frames, but super fast. I mean, it was, does anything like that happen, or? Kind of. Kind of, I don't know. It's everything, it was like, let me, I, I guess the best way I could put it was, it was, beautiful like the most beautiful thing that i ever ever felt but at the same time it was the most terrifying thing that i ever felt it i didn't so i like obviously i, I was raised in a, a roman catholic household i went to catholic school had all that you know stuff you know shoved down my throat i'm not necessarily religious i wasn't at that point either um i don't have anything against religion but i didn't i didn't see anything that led me to believe that there's like some kind of you know big religious thing at the I, mm-hmm. I I don't and that's the thing is I don't I don't fucking know what I saw yeah and I can't I, I mean, I'm not even gonna try to sit here and, yeah. and disparage anyone else's fucking no, what no, they no, saw no 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 I'm sure because everybody's I experience is different your experience man we're just asking I, you about yours yeah, but, no I know it was just fucking <clears throat> insane it was I know people who've had some real shitty things happen to them in their lives and then that makes them not believe that yeah. you know they're kind of like how could there be a god and this happened to me so. You know, I don't know. I'm not saying that's your perspective, but I, I certainly know people that that is. Yeah, um, I, under, I understand that perspective know. too. I'm, I don't know. I just, you know, I'm more of the mindset like, I don't see it, but you know, that doesn't necessarily. You can't touch it, either. it tangible, yeah. But yeah. so I'm like, we'll find out at the end. Yeah, who fucking well, knows? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Um, now, when did you did you know that you're gonna lose your your leg? Oh, I lost it instantly. It was right. gone. It was gone. Yeah. yeah. That blew off like a field goal kick. <laughs> Someone actually had to go run and get it. And I, rem- I remember they told me. That, so they picked it up. Um, I mean, my stump looked like a banana peel. So they walked up. My calf is down here. And I guess my calf muscle was hanging off by the Achilles tendon down here. <sighs> Damn. So, so one of the other team leaders picks it up and he, he like, spins to, like, wrap the calf up on it. Around the bone? And then sticks it in one of the new guy's drop pouches. He's like, carry this. I was like, oh, my God, you guys are screwed up. (laughs) I guess you got to do that. but Well, yeah, you're supposed to pick up. Because if if it's... I'm laughing about it. There's any chance it can be reattached. That's crazy you're laughing about it. No, it's not even that. It's just they don't want... They don't want propaganda. Yeah, I suppose. <laughs> they don't yeah. want them to be yeah, like, yeah. look what we got. We, you know, we destroyed a. Yeah. All oh, right. Yeah. Right. So. So Carver, obviously, we both know Derek Carver. Mm-hmm. He says that uh, guys that have, uh, you know, he's a military guy, also uh, amputee. Mm-hmm. Says guys that are below the knee amputees. He calls them paper, paper cut cuts. guys. <laughs> paper cut guys. You're obviously where you're halfway femur. Mid thigh. Yep. Mid thigh. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah, he's a little bit higher than me. But All right. Right. he just had a pretty major surgery. Yeah. Um. I don't want to do that. Basically, one. <laughs> basically put a titanium rod into his femur because he's very high. Yeah, and it gives him a lot more stability in walking. And well, now that yeah. that titanium goes into the prosthetic, right, they right, screw because it into the bone. correct. Mm. Oh, I'm good. No, but, but <laughs> I'm it, not. But <laughs> Rory could explain to you a lot better. But it's, it it attaches better to the prosthetic. No, that's exactly it. Instead that's of giving it, yeah. you like a suction cup fit, almost, which is yeah. I'm sure uncomfortable as well, but. Yeah, it was a it. pretty major surgery. He's rehabbing pretty hard right now. He's going to come on the show in March, he said. So. Yeah. Now, how was your rehab? About a year and a half. And, um, I mean, shit. It, I, I started walking at three months, so that was pretty cool. Um, really? Yeah. Wow. No, I had, um, again, like a, a lot of motivation. I was used to figuring shit on my own. My first ex-wife had already left me at the hospital, so that was kind of a motivating oh factor for me to fucking... Really? Wait, wait now. Your, your, your ex-wife... First, ex-wife. first ex-wife. Your your first two kids. Yeah, first two kids. Yeah. Left yeah. you while you were in when you're in a hospital. Yeah. Wow. Fuck. It. I, all right. It. I don't necessarily blame her. Because I didn't know what I was fucking dealing with. Right. Yeah. And I wasn't handling my shit. I wasn't processing it the right way. So, yeah, like you. you it was just an inevitable outcome, mm-hmm. and it's not necessarily indicative of her. Like she's a good mom, mm-hmm. and she's done an amazing job with you know my two oldest kids. But it's just like in that moment, we were both young as fuck. We didn't know what we were doing. We got married in the first place. Mm-hmm. We were both kids mm-hmm. raising kids. Right, right. So like you put a life and death situation in the mm-hmm. mix, and it's just like it's inevitable. So it, I mean, it is what it is. And but in the moment, it was an extreme catalyst, and it made me go, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna fucking. Go. Oh, oh it almost up. motivated you rather oh, than put you in a deeper. Wow, wow. Yeah. yeah. 
I've always been able to do that to myself. I've always been able to look myself in the mirror and be like, hey, you know, I'm going to fucking. So, so walking in three months mm-hmm. and uh, the prosthetic you have on, I, I have a friend, uh, Pete, who you've met mm-hmm. who lost his leg in a car accident. And I remember we, we hung out one time, though. It was the two of us. It was my buddy Pete who had a bad car accident, got yeah. ejected, lost his leg. And he saw your prosthetic. Mm-hmm. I, I forget what he said. He was like, yo, my shit costs like 20 grand. He goes, yo, that's like 50 G's right there or something. <laughs> yeah, shit's expensive as yeah. well. I'm, about, I'm actually about to go out to Iceland, uh, hopefully in March, to try out the third generation power knee. This is the second one. But um, I've, been, I've been going out and, you know, helping them out for a couple of years. Um, doing a lot of diagnostics and shit, just walking back and forth. And battery operated, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. So the, um, I guess the battery, when it goes back, you can kick it oh, back. Wow. The battery power makes yeah. it kick back forward, correct? Yep. To lock in place, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's wrong. That yeah. is wrong. Crazy. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Chip. Charge your phone with that thing. <laughs> <laughs> I can't stop looking at it, man. Mm-hmm. I like it. It's pretty cool. And the the weird part being is I feel more complete missing a goddamn leg. Wow. Good now, way to put it. And it, it honestly, I mean, I mean, you, Phil can even attest to it, man. Like, I, I, I didn't really have any kind of drive. Like, I, I didn't know, I didn't feel happy until last year. Really, like, I knew I was doing everything the right way. I knew I was getting help. I knew I was addressing my issues. You know, going to therapy, all that kind of shit, all the good shit. But it, it really wasn't until like last year that I started like. When I got into um, the social work program at Monmouth and I started, you know, doing a lot of, you know, I, I entered into a two-year therapy program that the state sponsors. Um, the therapist that I go to now, I've stuck with him for years. Mm-hmm. I mean, he doesn't even fucking charge me now. He, he, you know, mm-hmm. he, he just, he's that good of a fucking person. Right. And he's just stood by my side for years and years and years. But it, it, everything just started adding up and there was a lot of positive growth and I just started meeting good fucking people that wanted to help people like everybody in this fucking room. And it just, it just added to, you know, the fuel to my fire and it just, you know, Roy, I, this I just, is, there's a lot of layers to your story. I mean, it goes back to child. I didn't know any of that, by the way, you know, I didn't know about your, your childhood, um, struggles. You know, I, I was, we were here going to have you on because obviously we were, you know, we love military people and uh, we wanted to hear your story about losing your leg, which we knew mm-hmm. probably had a serious emotional toll on you. But it sounds like, you know, your, your childhood um, situation yeah. really traumatically affected you a lot too. How would you say more so than, than your, your injury and the, and the emotional? Or did the injury bring it to light? Yeah. Injury brought it to light. For yeah. sure. Really? I, I would have just kept going on thinking that was normal. Like I didn't, I didn't know any different, you know, as, as any kid really, they, yeah. they wouldn't know any different, you know, growing up in that kind of environment. Like, how do you decipher that? You only, yeah, you only grew up one way. You didn't know how other people grew up at that point. Yeah. Until you find out later on, I guess. Yeah. And that's kind of how it works, I guess, with everybody. Once you become an adult and you start, you know, all the, you make all the mistakes, you grow, you fucking learn. And you get to a good fucking place. I always think somebody can learn from your story. You know what I mean? It's just up to you whether you want to share it or not. You know what I mean? And some people have some some very heinous stories and some things that I get that they might not want to share. Mm-hmm. But you probably help another human being on the planet if you do so, and and you made it through somehow. I hope so. And, and you know, so. And you do motiv- motivational speaking now, uh, as you're kind of your gig now, right? I mean, I I work full time on. Uh, the name, the name base, right. but that's I I enjoy doing that. It's very cathartic for me. Um, each time that I you know stand in front of a group of people and I talk about or even this this kind of environment, if 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 each time I talk about how there was a point in my life where I wanted to die, mm-hmm. legitimately when I say those words, I wanted to die. Yeah, it takes the power away from it. Yeah. It used to be a thought in the back of my fucking head where I was just like, oh my fucking God, like how can, how can anyone understand this? How can anyone relate to this? You know, I'm, I'm fucking pathetic. You know, every fucking thought that pops through your fucking head, all the self-doubt, all the anger, all now the you, sadness. You, you just thought this just because of the accident and just where you were at the time or uh, or, or your wife the wife left you. I mean, your your pa- your parents' issues are coming up. All that came to, came to, to, to a head and that's what you're... you're 
thought process was at the time? It was everything, but I didn't know that it was everything. Mm-hmm. You know, I was just like, I feel this fucking way. I'm waking up in the morning and staring at the vent on my ceiling and wanting to fucking die. I don't want to get out of the fucking bed. Why? Mm. And I didn't know why. And what got you out of it, you think? Just talk, talking to your therapist? I don't... I, I, I don't know. Just time? I just... Time. I, just, I, just, I, just would, I don't... I guess it's just... A little bit of combination of everything. I think you kind of said it. You know, like when you... I think you have my skeletons heart. in your closet, right? Which we all do. Everybody in this room has skeletons in the closet. Yeah. And you open that door up and you show people... Nobody can use it against you anymore. That's exactly Nobody right. can use your skeletons against you, you know? So when you take it's therapeutic to... Right. to to open that up and say, listen, this is all of me right here. You know, what? what is anybody going to, nobody can use that in the future and say, oh, hey, this this happened to you and you're yeah. this, you already let it out. You know what I mean? And I would think there's a therapy in that. I would think. I mean, for me, and again, I'm certainly not comparing situations. No, but this is therapeutic. Too. Coming here, you know, episode one, we discussed. I know. The yeah. shit I went through in a divorce and no, I, I heard it. I heard it. I heard it, it, was, it in your voice, it man. It was therapeutic. I, I it really, truly was. I don't ever want to talk about it again. Not that I wouldn't, but for I the know. other party, for for my ex, I don't. She wants to be done with it. I'm sure, so I don't want to keep bringing it up. But so I would respect that. I talked about it one time. I want to be done with it. You know what yeah, I mean? But you guys are doing it right. You're you're, yeah. you're good. Like you you you're 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 doing everything right, and that's that's all anybody can do. Like you're, you, no one's got all the fucking answers. Yeah. You know, you and everybody's just got to try to be the best person they can fucking be and just That's do it. right by other fucking people they interact with. I agree, man. I totally agree. There's no blueprint to life, man. We're all just kind of figuring out as we go, you know? Yeah. Some have harder roads than others. There's no question about that. But Now, do you get to talk to um, military guys, soldiers that are going to leave for tours and stuff? I have uh, a few times. Um, I mean, I don't try to scare the, I don't try to scare the shit out of anybody. Yeah, I just, so what, what do you tell them? What I, do you tell them? I don't know. I just... um. I try to keep it relative to my audience, I guess, um, what they may experience. I, I, I do kind of try to stay like, hey, you know, this is what I went through. This is what I dealt with. This is what, you know, I had to deal with coming back. This is what you may encounter. I, I kind of do keep it middle of the road, um, but depending on who I'm talking to, I don't, like, I may go, like, deep in the weeds on a certain mm. subject, but no, it's just, um, Usually, me standing in front of people, um, as long as, as, as I'm able to stand in front of someone, and you, no matter what I talk about in any given circumstance, if I'm helping one person, which so far, every single time I've gone somewhere, someone has come up to me, and they've they've said thank you, and that has completely fucking helped me each yeah. and every time, because it's like, holy, all right. I'm, I'm all right. I'm, I'm all doing for not. something. I'm right. doing you're, something. You're, yeah, you're really right. helping people. Like, even if there's, like, 99% of the room is just, like, fucking on their phones, I don't give a flying fuck. If that one, one person, fucking person yeah. was, like, I, if that one person was sitting in, you know, where I was fucking sitting saying, I want to fucking die. I don't want to fucking do this. And they stopped, and they're, like, okay. Like, I can fucking do this. Like, just no matter what your time, political view is or... Where you are in life, I cannot imagine not respecting our soldiers. You know what I mean? You went there, yeah, you, yeah. You, you did what you were told to do, and you know, if you want to, if you want to hate our political figures, that's that's a different thing for maybe sending you there. But I can't imagine not appreciating our military. I mean, we are the, in my humble opinion, the greatest country on planet Earth. But what what, what do you feel about that over there? Can, can this war on tes- terrorism be won, or is it just a f- you know fucking circle jerk? <laughs> lay, it, lay it on us. Lay it on us. No From a man that's seen it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You can't okay. kill an I- you can't kill an ideology. Yeah. I'll just right. Leave right. It right. Right. You yeah. Can't. Yeah. One goes, another one pops up. That's the way the world. That's the way the fucking universe, man. Mm-hmm. There's got to be balance. Whether you know, you know, there's chaos, there's peace, man. Like yeah. it's just, it's how it fucking is, and their ideologies. Or, you know, a stark contrast to what, you know, we live. But that, that ideology lived over there for thousands and thousands of years. And, you know, we, we probably always had a presence there. But it wasn't until they attacked us on our soil that we really went there with, you know, the 
uh, the I don't know. Like, I think we've always been over there. No, I, we always had a, <laughs> we mean, always even, had a even presence. Like, even yeah. the formation of our fucking country, we were mm-hmm. fucking around over there, too. Yeah. 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 Like, uh, right. The Barbary Coast, like, there there was pirates coming off the coast of Africa attacking us. I mean, didn't, That's they, actually they, how didn't, the Marines didn't got formed. England make the, make the division of Iraq and Iran? Well, didn't they make them? Know. I think they did. I, I really don't know. You're talking yeah. over my head there, Frankie. Yeah, I think. Keep I, fighting. Keep fighting. I think they did, yeah. Really? I think they made the borders up. I thought that was the Middle East is the oldest. No, because the Middle East was the Ottoman Empire far, one time, before, was the Persian Empire one time. So it all, they, you know. That shit was all fucking Roman yeah. one time, too. Yeah. Well, that's, that's <laughs> Who fucking true. knows? <laughs> it all changes. There's always fluctuations. We're not historians here, people. No. No. Yeah. If you came to learn the History Channel, you're, you're watching the wrong podcast. <laughs> What's your favorite gun to shoot? My what gun did you use in the military, like when you were on, on, on you know, patrol? The saw. Did you? Yeah. That's the symbol for that. Oh, no, really? Shit. Yeah, before, I give it on my fucking That life. was my that's fucking a, Call of Duty gun, that's bro. That's a badass <laughs> gun, boy. I fucking love that gun. Yeah. Is that a 5.56? Five, 5. What is five, that? 5.56, five, yeah. 5.56, five, yeah. Yeah. It has a uh, belt head, 200 rounds. It's a big, big heavy gun, though, right? Pretty heavy? It's so worth it. Yeah. It's <laughs> so <laughs> fucking worth it, <laughs> It really is. When, guys, when gun guys talk <laughs> guns, it's like the swinging dicks come oh, out, yeah, you know? Man. Now you still uh, active in shooting and stuff like that. You yeah, still, you still do. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I was just man. gonna say that he right. goes to Pennsylvania where you can, you can shoot a lot more shit in Pennsylvania oh, yeah. than in oh, Jersey. Yeah. And there's a range out there that we were gonna go. I had to attend a funeral. I couldn't go, but yeah. uh, I I just hit him up the other day. I really want to go. You can shoot yeah. a lot of shit. Yeah, yeah. You man. can shoot fully auto out there. In Pennsylvania. First gun I shot was out in Pennsylvania in college. My buddy said, "Here, I'll, I'll bring my guns. We'll pull, we pull over the side of the road. There was a shooting range. I'm Dude, like, yeah, side of the road. It's night and day between Jersey and it's Pennsylvania. Oh yeah." New Jersey and New York uh, are the toughest. They got to be the toughest two states to. I got my concealed carry in too. Yeah, yeah Cali is tough. Concealed yeah. carry in three states, but Jersey and New York, forget it. You can't. You can't get to those other states to conceal I carry. Know. You know what I mean? You can't yeah. get your gun out of the state. That's mm-hmm. the crazy part about it. I mean, even cops that come over into Jersey sometimes get yeah. jammed up. Right. Like it's just. It's part of I the think fucking system. I'm in uh, um, New Hampshire, Vermont, and Florida, which I think. Enables me to carry in 38 states, something oh, like that. Are you talking about that reciprocity thing? Yeah, but I can't get out of the state with my gun to carry. Well, you mean concealed carry? <laughs> concealed carry, yeah. Uh, yeah, man. Yep, yeah. yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's a motherfucker. But it's once you crazy. cross, it's a quick-ass hour, hour and a half drive. I want to go. I want to do it bad. You will. Yep. I want to do it. This summer, yeah, probably. At the very, at, well, dude, it, at the very latest, even if something doesn't work out schedule-wise, like there's always that shoot that they have. There's some videos in. I went to Vegas. In Vegas, I shot some pretty dope ones. fucking amazing. Yeah, it's the same kind of shit. Yeah, you AK, made out of Vegas, AK. Man. Yeah, um, I'm not an indoor range guy though, but Vegas is all indoor yeah, ranges. Right, yeah, I'm right. more of an outdoor guy. That's how I grew up. I grew up in well, Maine. Well, it's on my buddy's farm. Everything just... was outdoor, and it's just what I like to shoot. I used to mm-hmm. belong to, you know, brick armory and stuff. And go, and yep. it just wasn't my thing. I don't want a guy behind me looking over my shoulder saying you're going to be done with this lane. Not that they're that rude, but <laughs> you know, like I. Well, I, I mean, they got to make sure it's safe. <laughs> yeah. I don't think the brick army's there no more. No, no it's a new name, new Garden State, or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, that was a. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know what happened over there. Me too. Did you hear yeah, that? that was yeah. bad. ATF came in. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Why? What happened? <laughs> a, uh, uh, I don't okay. know if we should talk about it, but. <laughs> <laughs> I see you roll jujitsu. I used to. Yeah. 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 That's I, awesome, uh, man. That was that was actually. Were you doing that before? After. Your accent after. Okay. after. No, that was um that was a big part of me transitioning to you know where I'm at now. Like it, it absolutely helped me and occasionally I'll still do it. But I mean, it, what works for me is going to the gym, working out and this may sound cliche, but I, I meditate like a motherfucker. That's awesome. Like actually fucking meditate. Like I have a, an application on my phone and I fucking. Now you do it in the morning, night or morning, throughout. After, anytime I feel fucking anxiety mm-hmm. or stress or anything really? like that. Like I think it's because, and I was actually thinking about, cause I was thinking about like what I was going to talk about when I came here tonight. Um, I, I think because most of my life was just extremely chaotic, was very, you know, hectic and, you know, combat. A lot of noise. In a sense. Yeah. yeah. Now I really, really enjoy the calm, the peace, the quiet. Mm-hmm. I enjoy watching that realization in people's eyes when they realize that they don't have to fucking suffer. It's up to them that, that like everything good that humans are capable of that's what i'm drawn to now and that's 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 completely what i focus on in every way shape and form and that's that's really what fucking does it for me for some people i, mean, I and i get it too because i how, remember, long, how long have you been into meditation jesse's very into a meditation couple years. Too. no yeah, yeah we were having a huge conversation about that at dinner the other night it was just 
Yeah, how, how, how do you meditate? Like, what's your your process? I mean, I, I try. My wife difficult. tries to get me to meditating. I'm, it's, I, it's. You know, it's I mean, it's hard when your your mind's. It's like tough. I'm, I'm, I have like something wrong with me. <laughs> it's. It takes a lot of fucking practice. Mm. It's. It's just like when you train in a muscle group. Your your brain's essentially like a fucking muscle group in that sense. Like you just gotta keep constantly trying stay at and it, trying and trying. And and they say there's no right way. You know, stand up, lay down. There's no right way or wrong way. Right? Not at all. Yeah. Whatever fucking works Jesse, for you. Whatever Jesse, helps you. Jesse feel does that. it naked in front of a heater. No, <laughs> he, he, he does it red lights. Infrared. He got mad. He got mad. He got mad. He got, mad. He he got really mad when I said he did it in front of a heater. <laughs> Is he doing it really naked for real? I swear to God, he does it naked. How do you I know? I fucking believe it because I went to pick him up and you watched him <laughs> <laughs> through, the, through the window. Yeah, yeah. My pants are <laughs> <You're now>. peeking. <laughs> he looks good naked. Oh. Uh, um, <laughs> no, I went to pick him up for uh, Florida. We were going to Boys Weekend in Florida, and he, he's like taking forever to come out. I'm like, bro, what are you doing? He's like, oh, sorry, bro, I lost track of time. I was meditating. He's like, like Van Dam, and yeah, then yeah, that split yeah. position. Yeah. <laughs> Holt. Jesse Holt. Yeah, yeah, Jesse Holt. Kung Pao. Kung Pao. We call him. Yeah. <laughs> his first tattoo ever said uh, Kung Fu on his arm, so we just. Got the nickname Kung Pao from that. We've been calling him Kung Pao for twenty years. Yeah. What, what um? I know he was Army. What do you, do you know? What unit he was? What, was he, he was uh, Airborne? I don't. Uh, was he? I don't, don't want to. I don't, wanna I don't know. Army. I don't know. But I know he's a bit into skydiving, so yeah. I imagine he would be an Airborne, but maybe not. I know he's a. I know he's a grunt. I know. I know he had. Uh, I don't want to misquote, team. but yeah. Oh, I'll, I'll text him when you're gonna ask him. I don't know. I mean, he saw some action too. Didn't? Didn't? Yeah. Didn't take any, you know, didn't lose any limbs or anything like that, but he got blown up in a Humvee. This is the, this is the you know. easy part. Now, yeah. now, did this you have other part. injuries, like, when that happened? Uh, Yeah, my ass got blown apart. I'm missing a chunk of my thigh. I'm missing Oof. a chunk of my calf. Um, Almost lost this. Uh, my ulnar nerve got severed. Jesus. Oh, you're all oh, really? Yeah, wow. So, like, I was in the hospital the first three days. They had it up in a sling, and they're like, if you can't move your hand. They, they were, like, straight. They're like, if you can't fucking move your hand. You know, I lost your. Yeah. Like it's, I'm like, fuck. Yeah. So I'm like sitting here, like this, like, <laughs> fucking willing it to move. Dude, a couple days into it, I'm like, hey. I'm like oh. yeah. <laughs> it was like, oh my fucking god, wow. I was so happy. <laughs> wow. Yeah. But no, I mean, they they apparently like thought that it was extremely difficult to line your your nerve endings up, but all you got to do is really like put them in the same ballpark. And your body goes. Like it makes it. It wants to. Yeah, it lines it up. Your ulnar nerve. That's when you hit your funny bone. Funny bone. Is that yeah, that's your ulnar yeah, nerve. Yeah. And they go up to. Uh, Generally, these two fingers here. So, anytime you feel like these fingers yeah, get numb, numb, that's your ulnar nerve. Yeah, that goes putting, in, right between your like if you're bone. putting pressure on it or something, your fingers. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, if you ever feel these fingers going numb, that's your ulnar nerve. Good to know. Mm. Good to know. Pressure points, buddy. Now, like the hand to hand combat in the in the U.S. Now, where, where do you think it stands against the <laughs> world? <laughs> I don't know. Not too good. <laughs> I didn't feel like back in the day, America was whooping ass. Now yeah, I don't know, not, man. It's not the same. I, I was down. I was so, down in uh, Fort Hood actually, um, mm-hmm. back in 2011 or 12, and okay. like we were there with their military uh, yeah. combatants, and uh, they had some pretty good guys down there. You yeah. know, they, a lot of jiu-jitsu, a lot, a, lot, a lot of that stuff, like Muay Thai and, and, and some boxing they do. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm wondering how how uh, in, how you think we opinion, stack against the rest of the world. America's hand-to-hand. getting soft. Is America's military getting soft? I'll tell you this. Here, let, me, let me. You know In Tim. Some Ke- ways, yeah. You know Tim Kennedy. Yeah. Right. He's well, Tim Kennedy. I, I heard him say that, like, we we don't have enough people to pool for special forces and like the special, you know, because there's just not enough people that want to do it. Talent? There's not enough people that gra- have degrees. And he's like, it's just it's just the people are getting soft. Is this? He actually said that that's why he gets to do what he gets to do. Yeah. So freely. I remember that. Right. To see is a recruiting factor. Right. He he openly know. Yeah. This openly mocks the Taliban and they, they literally oh, yeah. have hits out on the guy and he's like, Bring it. He dude, he's, he's I love following he's that heavily, guy. He's, heavily, uh, heavily armored at his house. Yeah, he's like the real life Rambo, I yeah. feel like, you know. He's like, I'm going on a I'm going on a trip and he has like a knife, a fucking guns, as like a fucking binoculars. He's, a, he's, a, he's, he's like he's like he's a double O seven dude. He really is. <laughs> Yeah, no, 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 no. Back to um, <laughs> just to back up a minute. You were talking about suicide, and I had some crazy thoughts for yeah, a very yeah. brief period of time. But I always thought, because it happens, right? It happens to a, a lot of uh, musicians. It happens, you know, suicide is not an uncommon thing at all. It happens to a yeah. lot of guys that come back from our military, obviously. And 
you know, when I was having crazy thoughts, um, I, I, I said, I don't want somebody else to tell my story. Because when somebody else tells that story, when you're gone and you're not here to tell it, they always say something was a little wrong with them. Something was, it happens to normal people. It, does. it can happen to a totally normal, average, everyday guy. And just depression hits you the wrong way on the right day. And you decide you don't want to be here anymore. And then everybody else, you know, your family, your loved ones, they'll have a cry. They'll say, we loved him. He was good. Everybody else will just say something was a little off with him. He was, And I was like, I, I don't want to be that guy. I don't yeah. want people say fucking Roger had, you know, some, some screws loose or, you know, no, I, I just I didn't want other people to tell my story. I'd rather be here and tell my own story. I know. You know? And that's, that's, that's kind of, that's what I was getting at is if I'd ever joined the military, I already had PTSD from my childhood. Yeah. Right. Like, if you take that part of my life, I was just your stereotypical kid that just had a fucking shitty childhood, and I had PTSD, depression, anxiety from it. Right. I didn't go to combat yet, and I already had it. Yeah. But I just didn't know it until I got back. And well, it's started. important to break a cycle, too, right? Because typically yeah. speaking, that can happen. If you come from an abusive family, you're, you're a dad. It's important. Mm -hmm. To break that cycle because it, 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 it does happen, you know yeah. what I mean? So I think that's admirable that you recognize it, openly talk about it, and don't want to repeat any of those, you know, those bad behaviors that... that I feel like there's people that get in funks that didn't even go through anything. You know? <laughs> yeah, Some yeah. people, like, you, like, you know, I'm not... I never had anything really too too dramatic happen to you, me. You a wait. loss, a loss, you know, losing a fight is probably one of the worst things. I mean, I've had some deaths in my, in my life from people I know, and obviously, but... I'll get in a funk and I don't. I'm like I shouldn't even be in a funk. So I can't imagine like. But that's someone still like fucking yourself. important to you. Yeah, no, that yeah. still affects you. Yeah, in a of way course, of course. That I can't understand, and Remember, you still right. feel like fuck. Like, yeah, what do wh I do? why, why, why do I feel like this? Right. That's yeah. That's the whole fucking point of that. You it's never like, stood in front of a mirror and just stared closely at your ears and just had a good fucking cry. Never. <laughs> you're, you're constantly never. bringing up his fucking ears, man. <laughs> He's Dude, jealous. He's, he's jealous. jealous. He he's let jealous. me listen. Listen. Those, be, are, those are a be, sign of fucking badass. I know. I, that's how you. That's how you tell <laughs> a badass today. When I was young, it was the size of the guy. Now you just look at the ears. Yeah. But um, he let me. Size, you got to see the fucking ears. You're like, okay. You got to feel those. <laughs> you got to feel them before you leave. I know it's weird, but. Dude, I felt them it's before. It's like a I fucking know rock. Yeah. Feel it's like, a man. fucking rock. It's like a rock in his ear. It's crazy. Do you want to feel my nub? Before I do. I've felt it before. Shit. Man. Now, do you ever get the when people say they lose like a fan, the phantom itch or phantom? Yeah. yeah. No, I I actually used to, but a uh, nice little side effect of the antidepressants that I got put on last year was they completely eliminated them. Really? Wow. But I used to have them every single day. Phantom sensations, phantom pains, doesn't matter. Um, they were just a constant. But it's your it's your brain, you know, firing um, the nervous system or something like that, or the electrical system. Um, I'm not exactly sure what it is. Trying to like remap it and go, you know, where the fuck is this yeah, body part yeah, right yeah, now? Yeah. And it can translate to, oh, my foot's itchy, but my foot's not there. Someone's fucking like burning your foot off, et cetera, et cetera. Wow. Like it, it varies. Wow. Yeah. And you said the medication they put you on made, made that go away, or yeah, just by, no. by chance? Yeah, that was. Um, so I, last year I was, you know, obviously white knuckling it my whole life, and I was like, you know, I'm doing everything right, but I'm still feeling a little bit off. Maybe there's something wrong with my brain chemistry. Maybe I should just, you know, go and see. Started on a small dose. First thing that I tried, only needed to stay with a small dose. I took the edge off. I'm good. You know? Right. And I know that's, like, not common. I know it's... Well, you, know, you get so many bad side effects and, from and, drugs. And, and, and it's, there's, it's, there's one that's this, a good one. It worked for and me. And it's, so it's, work, it's still... It's continuing to work. Yeah. Yeah. Well, still that's great. Taking, it, taking yeah. it for about a year now. I'm good. I hear... Uh, a lot of they're used for for PTSD patients like psilocybin or even MDMA. I know some people. You ever hear any of that stuff? It's, yeah, no, I, I know some people that have done it successfully. Yeah. MDMA, yeah. really? Yeah, yeah. Even really? Sometimes LSD too. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Medically. Mm -hmm. Medically. In a controlled environment. Right. Wow. For the purpose of a study, not done illegally. Well, the government like, fucked yeah. around. There's some old videos where the government <laughs> played around with LSD with some people way back in the day. They yeah, the crazy I, videos. I think the guy that invented it. Uh, he was a scientist. Wasn't Timothy Leary? Was it Timothy Leary? No, no, no. I don't no, know. He was like he a was... big advocate of it. But uh, I forget the guy that invented it. But I think he invented it, ingested it, didn't realize, and went on a bike ride. <laughs> and I think he was in. Maybe he was in a different country. I don't know if he was in the U.S. or. But he went on a bike ride. And he and he wrote. He went home and wrote about this bike ride. It was this epic bike ride. <laughs> Damn it! Wow. Yeah. 
there's a lot of shit that uh, we don't really fucking. Well, yeah, there there are a lot of you know a lot of different ways to. There's a I video guess, somewhere. It's, it a, it's a black and white video of a guy. It's a military video. A guy behind glass that they gave LSD to. Yeah. It's just a normal everyday guy, and it just shows him that, transitioning. Yeah. Yeah. From like a normal dude sitting at a desk mm-hmm. to a f- crazy person. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, how much LSD did they give him? I don't know. <laughs> bro. Was, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it's a video though. You can watch it. It's yeah. online. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, they, they, they just videoed him name? and monitored it. Right. And Albert Hoffman right. and Timothy Leary. Look Check at that. Go. The kid got some facts. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow, he pulled that out of his ass. He yeah. did. You Googled uh, it? Uh-huh. Nice. Fact Stop. check, baby. Fact nice, check. Buddy. Nice. <laughs> coming up big. So do you have any speaking gauges coming up or anything like that? Oh, uh, your website and, and your Instagram. Go ahead and shout it out if people would like to give Rory a follow. Uh, my website is RoryHamill.com. Pretty simple. Mm-hmm. Uh, my Instagram is Rory.Hamill. Um, yeah, no, I'm kind of just... I've mostly what I've been doing a lot of... I just got done speaking at Monmouth County Prosecutor's Office um, to uh, about 90 detectives for their resiliency training. Same thing that I was talking about here tonight. I was talking about to a room full of detectives and just sharing my story and shit. And it, I, you know, I was fortunate that a couple of people came up and told me that it helped. Um, but I, I do a lot of, you know, I, I actually, I'm supposed to be speaking at, um, the Ocean County Police Academy to some of the recruits here and there, uh, actually on my alive day. Yeah. Thursday. Oh, oh wow. that's awesome. Yeah. Um, that's what you call it. You're alive day. I like that. Yeah. Uh, uh, nine yeah. years. Yeah. It's going to be my ninth alive day. Wow. And you think that that's the day that everything changed for you? Obviously. I mean, you know. I got that change, yeah, but I mean, a, but, but it led. But we think about that. it. But it led to it led to your recovery in a sense. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, um, you talked about some some heartbreak in your personal relationships. Mm-hmm. Obviously, your your first wife, you know, said left you during the mm-hmm. thing. You don't blame her. I think that's a good attitude to have. I've, I've, I don't blame I've tried, any. Yeah. Like I've, I understand. Like any relationship is fifty fifty. Uh huh. Everybody, you know, gets in a certain way at a certain right. time, depending on what they're dealing with. Do you think you're better equipped now with your mindset to be in a relationship? And are you in a relationship? Um, I'm not now. Hit him up in the DMs, please. Slide Hit him up in the DMs. DMs. Slide in them DMs. <laughs> I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, 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 right now I've, I've really been focusing on, you know, how I can better handle everything. Right. Because, I mean, I, I, I just got out of last year a serious relationship. I was engaged. And, oh, uh, wow, okay. unfortunately that, you know, didn't work out, but, uh, you know, lessons learned and, you know, they always say, uh, I'm a, I'm a lover, not a fighter. You're a fighter and a lover. apparently. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I'm a fucking teddy bear man. I'm not good at fighting. I'm Where, just, how old, how old are you now? I'm 31. Okay. So oh, young, buck, young, bro. Bro. young buck. Young wow. buck. Roger's oldest. I'm fucking dirt. old as dirt. <laughs> <laughs> Probably going to die on air on this show. You guys just keep watching. <laughs> Keep watching. <laughs> Rogers just from old age, right? Forty four, motherfucker. Forty four. Yeah. Old. That's Looks not good bad though, old, man. What's... Yeah, found the fountain of youth. New Jersey steroids. Ah <laughs> 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 uh, shit! A little bro meeting there down here. <laughs> yeah. Phil's a pretty jack. Now, is that is that too. uh is that prevalent in in the military steroids? Um, here and there. Uh, Frank and yeah. anti Olympics, bro. No, I'm saying I've I don't know. I've I mean, it's probably hard to get out to fucking Afghanistan. I don't know. But I mean, the, I mean, it depends no? on the environment and everything. Like, no, oh, dude, no, I they got, have them there. I got something they I have to ask you about. Yeah. Yeah. Now, isn't this yeah, true? I mean, I, how about I don't know if it's this not is true. There. Like a lot, <laughs> isn't this like a conspiracy theories or not? I don't know if it's a conspiracy. Maybe it's proven that the reason we're in Afghanistan is because of all the opiates that's there. Is that is that it? I've heard that, you but. Know? Maybe no no comment. You're no gonna comment. bring <laughs> you're, gonna, you're gonna bring big pharma in this. <laughs> I'm not even gonna go down that one, Yeah, no comment. All right, okay, okay. Move on. We're your, moving on. Your entire family was just abducted <laughs> from upstairs. I'm not yeah, yeah. All of a sudden, I'm not yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yo, totally weird off topic. <clears throat> Uh, camel spiders. You ever seen any of those things over Not there? Once. Those things are the scariest freaking looking spiders you've ever seen in your life. They're in Iraq and Afghanistan, correct? They're actually scorpions. Are they? They look like a spider. They're called sun scorpions. Okay. But I've the been, reason they're called camel spiders is because they would hang out on camels. The, but, yeah. I didn't see any. Dude, no, no, no. scary. They'll looking. fuck you up if they, they bite are. you. But <laughs> I saw. But are they poisonous? They're I don't they're no. like local but not like to the point okay, like yeah. it's, it's like a bee like a, like a bee sting kind of yeah there's there's videos of soldiers yeah. putting them 
you know, fighting them against each other, putting them in like soda bottles and fighting oh, like cockfights, or <laughs> fighting them against lizards, and they'll Eat fuck me. up. They'll kill a lizard, bro. Yeah, it's, crazy, yeah. it's like wow. it's like the local local area. Like the tissue gets uh, necrotic and yeah, it goes yeah. and shit. Yeah, they're wow. fucking weird. Really? Fuck they, that. They, they, they look like mini face huggers. I'll fucking hit them with the saw. The I'll get the saw out. <laughs> they're the ugliest spiders you've ever seen in your life. Woo. There's all kinds of weird shit over there. Are we ever in ba- Bahrain? No. Cool, I've been there a couple times. Close by, but... No, That's never... one of our biggest bases in the Middle East is in Bahrain, right? I believe. Yeah, they're one of our... Yeah, them in Kuwait. Mm. No, I just stopped by in Kuwait. Never stopped by Bahrain. I was in... Uh, Kyrgyzstan too at one point that was a that was a different place now were you always married when you were military yep no yeah the entire my entire marine corps career I was married to my first Mm -hmm. ex-wife I I was I was saying if you weren't I was gonna ask if you uh indulged in the local uh variety (laughs) you know what I mean no no I I don't know I don't know what it's like you know you're out there for a long time the other thing too is a lot of masturbation in an outdoor shower bud (laughs) All right, so when I, <laughs> so there was two things that I said when I got my leg blown off and I hit the ground and they started working on me. The first question was, and this is very, very common to a lot of the guys that get injured. I looked at, I looked at my doc. I'm like, doc, I know my leg's gone. You don't have to bullshit me. And the first thing, you never tell a casually what the injury is. Like, but, but obviously, like I had already had tons of experience with this shit. I'm like, I know it's gone. I couldn't get my tourniquet. I know my leg's gone. And he looks at me, looks at my stump. He's like, Yes, it's gone. I'm like, okay, please, for fuck's sake, tell me my dick's still there. Oh, man. <laughs> and my buddy's like, hold on. And he puts a fist in front of my face, and then he goes, boom, right in my dick. As I'm <laughs> on the ground, I'm like, Fuck. I don't know if that's a good uh, friend no, or but it, fucking it, no, Satan. No, 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 but, like, but it was kind of genius Almost because like, the yeah. pain yeah. washed. Yeah. I was yeah. like, oh, yeah. Yeah, my dick works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, that, that's got to be that's gotta. You be didn't want to come home and be Lieutenant Dan. No, no, Lieutenant Dan had a, no. a dick. What are we talking about? No, he didn't have a dick. No, you see that he lost his legs. You know, remember the hookers? They had the hookers in the room, and she like reached down his pants. I forget what, this, but he didn't have a dick. He didn't no have a dick. dick. Yeah, wow, man, that's dick, tough, yeah. bro. I thought, I thought, uh, I thought. Oh, I think, I think, yeah, that's what it was. It was, it was paralyzed. Uh, like he had it, but it was. Oh, just, maybe that's what it was. I don't uh, know. She grabbed a noodle. <laughs> that was also a no, born movie. Fourth of July. Yes, yes, that yes Tom that's Hanks, right. Yeah, Tom Cruise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Movie. Another great movie. No. But yeah, war is definitely, uh, I mean, you know, Hollywood, Hollywood, like, you know, romanticizes it and all this, but damn, bro, it's it's dark, huh? I mean, imagine. Have you, ever, have, have you ever seen a movie that even came close to putting it in perspective what it's like? Oh, shit. I mean, well, Saving Private Ryan was good. Yeah. yeah. Was good. That was pretty good. I actually just saw that recently. Just saw that. For the first time? Your first time, yeah. Great Jesus. fucking movie. Yeah. That's a fuck. That's yeah. that. And I like Black Hawk Down. Black Hawk yeah, Down. Black was Hawk, I mean, one of my one of my best friends. Um, he's he was actually there. That was a true story, right? That was. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. In uh, um, what, Somalia, right? Somalia? Yes. Somalia. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was it was a fucking shit show, uh, and it wasn't supposed to be a shit show. That's why it was it's supposed to be a routine show. thing, right? Yeah. It's always supposed to be a fucking right. Routine well, thing. yeah, I imagine. And it always, you, that's the thing. Like you can you can prepare. You can have a map on the wall. You can like we're gonna do this. If this happens, we're gonna do this. Carry this, carry that. Blah, Never blah, blah, happens blah. that way. You plan out the fucking ass, and then something obscure fucking happens, like a goddamn donkey runs up with a fucking IED strap to it or mm-hmm. something. And you're like, "Who made the fucking donkey IED plan?" And boom, yeah, everything just goes to fucking right, shit. Right. That's an extreme situation I've never experienced, but I'm just <laughs> yeah. pulling. right, right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's just like something stupid like that could happen, and, that, and you just got to figure it the fuck out. In the but that was the, the biggest threat over there is IEDs. I mean, that's what you always hear. At least every yeah. a, every casualty or accident is from an IED, huh? Yeah. Well, on all of my deployments, it was. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and it's, that's it's just literally strange. a homemade bomb, pretty much. Yep. HME, oh. homemade explosive. That's mm. that's what they would call it. Um, we would occasionally. Uh, stumble upon compounds where they had like these drying rooms. It was almost, you know, kind of laid out on these fucking mats, like almost like crystal meth. They had to dry it out, the urea nitrate and the, the chemical combination that they made and everything like that. Couldn't step in there because if you stepped in there, you possibly could, Ignite you know, it. pop it and everything like that. Little pop rocks get a little fucking toe pop and action going on. But it it was just so fucking archaic. They they were so like low tech that it was almost yeah. genius. I was gonna say such a cowardly way to fight compared to the way we're used to fighting, but effective, right? Very but that's effective. That's how I would fight. Very effective. <laughs> I'm yeah. saying, but, but we, if, we, if I'm being fair, I would I mean, do I that do. shit here in America. Well, if like 
the Afghan army was no. walking on the streets. Yeah. I don't know I if you can say this, but did you guys do that there? Do we do we do oh, that you there? Called in airstrikes, I would think, right? Um, yeah. I mean, we, we had our they our attacked from shit, but yeah. we, we never. Yeah, it was, ours was more like you couldn't not fucking see us. Yeah. Mm. We're in a goddamn uniform. We patrol these areas. We are in a fucking static location. Like you, you ever bunch seen of a, white boys. Ever seen an A ten <laughs> come in and just oh, yeah. unload? Those things are oh, so right. cool, man. God, those, those things that, they call them warthogs. They're planes. They fly really, really slow. They're like indestructible, <laughs> and they make a noise, bro. When they when they fire, they're big fifty cal, right? It's a fucking it's a plane built around a goddamn it three, really thirty is. millimeter anti tank fucking. So fast that it's not individual sounds. It's no, it sound. makes you hear a. <laughs> It you makes it the Burt. the craziest <laughs> sound you've ever heard in your life when it. Burst. And is it flown by a man or a? Uh, yeah. No, it's not a drone. Yeah. It's a, it's no, a, it's guy. a dude. Yeah. Uh, dude, one dude, one one man, one man or it woman. Can, it can take incredible <laughs> amounts of damage and still fly. It's nah. crazy. Yeah. Nah. yeah, it's it's a fucking gun yeah. built around gunner, gunner. It's just right. a fucking Shit. yeah, the gun with wings. It's fucking beautiful. Those the the fucking attack helicopters and all that shit. The Hueys with the fucking mini guns out the side. Now all this after everything you've been through. <laughs> Would you do it again? Fuck no, yeah. no, what you know? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. All right, fuck yeah. I love yeah, it. I mean, I love it. It, I, there's no question. Now that you know your dick didn't get hit, you do it again. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, shit, even though my dick got blown off in that time. Like, I was Don't talk like that. Don't walk, talk like hey, that. Hey, man, you know, it is what it is. I got, I got fucking kids. Yeah, you already, I already, already fucking accomplished. Sowed your seed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, I got a legacy. It's fun, you know? No, I would absolutely do everything again. I, I don't know no about question. the dick thing. But I'm dying to wrap <laughs> this interview up so I can go home and jerk off. <laughs> 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 I'm kidding. Well, what this is all the, all the dick all, all the dick talk is getting Roger excited. <laughs> 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 can you get your hand off your crotch there, buddy? Yeah, I, I don't. Talking. I never know where to put my hand. I never. Know, I'm. A, I put it like this. I'm always like this because I'm like, where are my hands? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> so you don't, you don't roll jujitsu anymore, though? No, I mean occasionally. I'll, Gotta get I'll back get in, in there, man. Yeah, you, it is that a Madame gi I saw? It, I was at Madama for a while, and then I bounced over to uh, Tom the Blossom. Okay, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we like Tom. Tom's a good dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good buddies with Tom, man. Big teammates with Tom for a long, long time. He's yeah. a good human. Yeah, I like him. Got a really good uh, academy down in Lacey. Yeah, he does. Yeah, real damn good. Yep. No, I I love the um. I mean, I. It, what's really fucking weird is every single time I rolled, I fucking lost, but I fucking loved it. it it's not. It, that's what not. I know it's not about. It's not I about know, that. You know I know that. that. But you know how it is. Like you get a fucking a young kid coming in on the mats and shit. And they're like, yeah. I gotta fucking win. And like, well, I would think once you're on the mats, I mean, you're missing a leg, so you're probably missing some levers. But I mean, you got a you got a real shot down oh, there. Oh, every time I'm, I'm like this. But like I, I can you tell know, you this, they're not gonna ankle pick you. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I just I got comfortable. I got comfortable being in the defensive position and just you know. That was another thing, and I had the benefit of constantly lifting every day. Was my grips were just they, they couldn't yeah. get out of these fucking grips right here, uh, and so I was just like this, and I'm like trying to like wait for the fucking opportunity. Well, I'll but, tell you too. I bet your 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 weight class you'd be in would be a lot lower than I, your yeah. real body size. No, too. that's that's the the good thing. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I actually tried fucking around with that in a judo tournament, lost, but I mean it was still that there's was a, nice a uh, Anthony Roll was um, I don't know what year 2015, 2016 maybe. He won a national title and he has one leg. Yeah. No shit. Yeah. He's what is the um, <clears throat> shit? I watched a great documentary. The guy has half a body and he's a terrific wrestler. Um, it's a documentary. I oh, am. You mean Kyle Maynard? No, I don't think that's the name. It's on Netflix. <laughs> he's going for it. Pull it up. It's a short. It's only like a 20 minute is it Netflix. A, a little black kid? Yeah. Little black kid. Is that young, name? young black kid? Yeah. Yeah, he's from Long Island. Jack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jack, young, bro. Young, yeah, I met and him. an amazing I met him. Yeah. wrestler. Amazing. Yeah, like, um, yeah, you ever seen? Clark? What is it? Uh, Zion Clark. Yes, yes. Zion. Yep. Zion. Or yep. Zion. Zion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You, you know that guy, um, mm-hmm. Pitbull Roll or whatever on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Derek, I know Derek constantly goes back and forth of him, but okay. he's he's the same thing. He's just like basically a tourist. Really? Dude, this motherfucker is so goddamn jacked. Yeah. He's got tree trunks for fucking arms. It's it's, it's insane. We're we're good friends with uh, Nick. Sanitasso. Yeah, you can never say his last yeah, name Sanitasso, right. Sanitasso. He's um he was you, born uh you know with no legs, yeah. n- only one arm. Mm-hmm. Comes like a finger. Only has one finger. Yeah, yeah. and um oh, shit. you should follow him. Extremely. From, he's from motivational uh, guy. From from Bayville, central central regional kid. Does motivational speaking as well yeah. on big platforms. Big platforms. Um, he, he speaks at like uh, first one summer strong. Yeah. yeah. Oh no shit. Yeah. Okay, he uh he actually wanted to wrestle and his one he had like a a, a nub 
here, like yeah. on this one side. So one side comes to like a finger, and this side comes to like his 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 elbow. And uh, he wanted to wrestle, and he kept getting like I guess injured a little bit on this side. Yeah. So he had to go to a doctor, and the doc the doctor said, "Listen, if you want to continue to wrestle, we have to amputate more more of your arm." Mm -hmm. He said, "Fuck it, let's do it." His parents were like, "Well, what are you crazy? What are you doing?" And he's like, "You barely, you know, nope, I want to wrestle." I fucking amputated shit. The kid won his last match. Well, he won his he's last a, match. You know, he's extremely pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah, he really is. Yeah, local guy. Dude, he so. used to. He had videos. This is when Walking Dead. Well, Walking Dead popular when it was real popular. He used to scare. He used to go in in, in yeah, shop yeah, rights yeah, yeah. and, and dress funny. up as a zombie yeah. and scare people. Very he actually scared the 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 Walking Dead cast. A big part yeah. of his Instagram. <laughs> Is just humor. Yeah. Is, is, yeah. How, do you, is a really how do you spell his, his name? Because uh, I'm going to look him up right now. I'll find out. But yeah, it's uh, he he's a pretty uh, pretty um, inspiring individual. Haven't seen much that the guy doesn't do. He snowboards. Snowboards, yeah. skateboards. Yeah. yeah. I have seen this guy. Yeah. Okay. Santo Nastasso. Yeah, Santo okay. Nastasso. There probably, you go. Probably his most famous video ever is with The Rock. He's got a video of him working out in The Rock. Yeah. He, did, he did a couple. He's in the bodybuilding. He yeah. did a couple bodybuilding shows, but. That's another good human. Oh, Rock bro. Um, yeah. I hit I him hope, up. I, 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 I said, would you come on? He said, I will, but <laughs> he's so goddamn busy. I don't know if we can get him on. Dude. Oh, The Rock? Yeah, the rock. Fucking rock is the most uh, rock. What you want to call? Oh, I thought you were talking about the rock. I no, thought you said no, the rock. The, and it'll come on. The motherfucking no, rock. No, Nick has a yeah, video with you, the man? rock. That'd be uh, fun. No, I know, I know. I thought you like said we told. I asked the rock to come on. No, and Nick. He said, yeah, I, I'll come I on. asked Nick to come on. <laughs> the rock wouldn't even fucking talk to us. I wouldn't talk to us if I was the rock. I remember this. No, you know he would. <laughs> yeah. he's, he's all about that Wait, shit, who? man. Nick or the rock? Both probably. right? The rock would tell us to fucking kick rocks. No, he would not. All right. All nah, right. he seems like a pretty genuine dude. Rock, he does, man. but where does he have the time? I've never seen a guy that pushes That's, a harder. I, yeah, I'll tell you, he, he finds guy. ways I, yeah. to do things, man. That guy. Seems I would like. clam up if he was but in there. Just had be like, the ability guy's like my hero. Way, if he had the fucking time, you know you'll definitely would. go home and beat off after that yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> Not even lie, I would. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, <laughs> Frankie with the gay jokes. Always. Uh, <laughs> hey, man. Always. Hey. Stop it. <laughs> it's, his catalyst, it's his catalyst to my ear comments. <laughs> yeah, yeah. he went. He went from age to gay. Hey. The old gay guy. <laughs> the old gay guy. Yeah, he probably dressed real well. Yeah, yeah. I'm sharp. I'm snazzy. <laughs> <laughs> now, were you in the era of um, "Don't Ask, Don't Tell," or was that <coughs> the transition? Transition. <coughs> yep. And it never. It never bothered me. You know, I, uh, listen, I wasn't a military guy, but I don't think I would. But here's my here's my perspective on everything across the board. I don't care if you're talking about police training, fireman training, military. I don't care what you are. I don't care what your sexual preference are. I don't care. I don't care. That matters zero to me. What matters is if you can pass the same test that I test. If you can, if you can, if the if, if the bar is not lowered for you in any way, shape, or form, and that goes for women, that goes for then then you're in. It doesn't matter to me. I could care less. I have no phobia. I just don't think that the bar should ever be lowered for any particular job. You know what I mean? I agree. You all right, man? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> Who's sucking the dick now, boy? <laughs> Jesus. Man. Fucking hitting the tonsils. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> He has a good <coughs> reflex, guys. <laughs> this is why I could never be with him. We would never work. We would never work. Listen. Listening. We're going to have to worry about say. this guy. <laughs> We're going to have to worry about this guy. We all heard about Roger. <laughs> <laughs> My status is legendary. <laughs> Listen, I always say, I don't have a tiny dick. You just got a huge fucking vagina. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I'm okay. I'm back to it. I'm yeah. back to it. <laughs> Rory, <laughs> Rory, Rory survived fucking hell, and you're gonna choke to death on our podcast. I know. I know. Jeez, we need. No, we that's, need that's uh, the fucking worst though. When you, you just start fucking coughing. Oh man, it hit the I back throat. Yeah, I'm you know. sure it did. <laughs> yeah, first, so all, not the first, all. not the first group of men he said that to. <laughs> you can't be saying that. It just lost my voice. <laughs> Roger wishes. Come on. <laughs> he just looked us all in the eye and said that. <laughs> Oh, here he goes Jeez, again. What the hell? Sorry, Renee, how's sorry, that life Google. insurance plan up there? 
Uh, we just, yeah, we just uh, re upped. Re upped. I, I feel like you set me up. She's been a little <laughs> angry with you. You better, she better re up. <laughs> so yes, um, w- w- give us. Uh, you got a story from like the Middle East. Oh. Being there, something. I'm sure a lot of them you can't tell, but yeah, yeah I'm sure. Um, give us one of those. <laughs> well, I mean, an- another uh, a big major moment was on the second deployment. Um, when my team leader got shot in a three-sided ambush, um, myself and, uh, six other guys, for some reason or another, our old battalion commander went and pursued this for better part of a fucking decade. And he got all of us, um, Navy and Marine Corps accommodation medals with, uh, V for Valor. And we just, all of us got awarded it a decade after action. But when my team leader got shot, um... Oh, for this act that you're going to tell us. This is, yeah, in 2009. Oh, wow. yeah. These guys, he, he got fucking shot. You know, uh, the doc did the work. We're getting contact from three sides. We're in a canal. Um, it's like belly button, waist high water. And water's not clean over there. So, obviously, the biggest concern was we don't want him to get septic. We don't want the, you know, the gunshot wound to um, get infected. You know, it could yada, yada, yada down the road. So we call in the, the medical, uh, we call in the Kazabak. Um, we throw smoke out when they get on station. Um, they brought two Cobras and a Yui, and they were just lighting compounds up with Hellfire rockets and um, miniguns and everything like that. Um, but before um, they started lighting shit up, they needed to wait for us to egress back. But the, Kaz- the, the helicopter actually landed in front of one of the fucking firing positions. So the fucking I, I, I forget the Between title. Between you and the enemy. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so I I, I forget was it the gunner? Is it the gunner or whatever? The the guy that like or the crew chief, right? Yeah. Pops out, hops right out the side of the fucking kilo and he start he has his pistol out and he's like bop bop like popping. Oh. At the, because dude there's just a dude like right there That's up some in the movie fucking, shit. Yeah. It I remember going, What the fuck is he oh shit? And I'm you know, I started fucking engaging, but I was the only fucking dude that had my fucking weapon, and they ran out without weapons. Wow, those motherfuckers! Like Jesus Christ! And it was the same thing when I got when I got fucking injured. Kirsty Ennis, do you follow her? On, I, on yeah, she's a door gunner, bro. Girl, mm-hmm. door gunner. Yeah, yeah. That was what I don't know. Crash or something like that. Uh, yeah, um, a lot of people. A lot of people said she's that she's a, a bad lot, lot, bitch. Bro. Yeah, no, she's now great. now her. She's got a foundation. Summit, she's summit the. Yeah, she wants to Everest. summit all well, the seven got, the seven highest peaks. Wow. She did Everest. I don't know if she made it. I don't she think did the base camp. I she think. did. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think she made it at the top ever. But just a bad bit. But a door gunner. Yeah, she was a fucking door gunner, and a helicopter went down, and she's also an amputee. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it wow. went down in combat. I don't know the story. We'd love to have her on. A, I think it was in Iraq. She comes to New York a lot, so I asked her to come on. She said she would her next trip out, but um, yeah, she. I'm very impressed with her. I talked to her quite a bit. I just I'm so impressed yeah. with her as a human. If I'm not mistaken. Uh-uh. It wasn't because of anything that they did. I yeah, it was out of her hands. I, I just hear like uh, I, that, I know. I, I know she was at. the I base believe camp. she made. A I hear it not as to weather related. Correct, which it almost always is. Yeah, I hear there's like traffic jams. There's so many people that want to do that. Certain now. times of year, yeah, I think. And there's so much trash now there. Yeah, yeah. 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 But she wants to do the seven. What do they call it? The seven summits or something yeah. like that. And she has an extremely successful foundation and. She's a very beloved man. She's and she's a beautiful girl. You should follow her on Instagram. That's, it's that's actually good uh, shit, man. Like, little, I love that. Man. Little uh. off topic, but you ever see? I seen some. You know Eddie Izzard, that mm-hmm. musician Eddie Izzard. He's like a trans. Why does that sound familiar? He's a, he's a musician. Uh, he dresses like a girl. He dress, he has wears lipstick well, and not, stuff. But he's doing twenty eight marathons. Jesus. In twenty eight countries yeah. in twenty eight days. Oh, he's doing a marathon a day. How for do you 28 s- days. How do you, how do you do sleep? That? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know. <laughs> I was running. Yeah. 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 yeah like I fucking don't know. He's not a singer, bro. He's doing he's it for some. Or... <clears throat> he's not a singer? <laughs> well, I mean, like, if you're well, running that many, you're the best I marathon mean, runner right? ever. He's a stand-up comic. Eddie Izzard's a Close. stand-up comic? Oh, he's, not a, he's not a singer? That guy is not doing any marathons. Dude. That guy? I'm telling you. Go look it up. Look up his thing. I'm quick. But he's doing 28 marathons. Dude. I've seen some guy do it. it. I, I seen a guy. I know a guy did it seven days well, in seven the, different let's, continents. Let's define what a marathon he is. He did seven miles? days in seven different continents. 22? 26.2. 26.2, okay. Is it? Yep. Marathon, yeah. 
26 13, points. That's why you see the 13.1. You You're said right. there's people that do one a day. I couldn't do one a month. I couldn't do one in a month. Shit, yeah, there was, was a fucking double amputee. I told you. 20. He was a wounded vet. He was at Walter Reed. Born in 62, yep. 58 years old, end of what? the 11th, thanks Slovakia. Our campaign is called Make Humanity Great Again. Yeah, Make Humanity Great Again, yeah. Oh, boy. I like the, so you I know like what the that is. slogan. <laughs> slow shot. How, okay, so now... This this one you used to, the, the, way, the Medal of Valor was that the one Obama gave you? That was a Purple Heart. So oh, when, purple when heart, I was yeah. in the hospital, um, I actually thought I was fucking hallucinating. When he came in, yeah, like he walked in the room and I'm like, no way, fuck. It was like where, where you're standing over there, and I'm just like, huh? And then he comes in, and then Secret Service pops. Oh, in you had no bit. idea he was coming. No, they're wow. like they're like a high profile guest is coming. I'm like, okay, so like you know a general or something like that. They're like, you have to shave your face. I'm like. Uh, why? So they have give me this like fucking brand new bedpan. Dude, you think Obama gave a fuck if you shaved no, your face? No, Come but, on. no, but you, in the military, yeah, 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 legs yeah, yeah, blown yeah, off yeah, and you gotta shave Before your care. face. Yes. We don't want a disgusting marine. Yes. Oh, you got your leg blown off? You better fucking blow them goddamn still, facial hairs still, off too, still, asshole! Like it doesn't matter. Wow. <laughs> you need to maintain that standard. You're a fucking marine, whether you got one leg or two. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> if I was in the army, I probably could have a beard. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're marine too, Phil. Army. Okay. Army. All right. no. no, it's uh he <clears throat> walked in and I was just like, Is this real right now? And he came over and he's like, Corporal Halo, just wanna, you know, thank you for your service to our nation. That's a pretty like, good That was pretty good, bro. He was, was pretty like, solid. Key and Peel nailed the fuck. Oh, I yeah, watched yeah, the Key yeah, and Peel yeah, yeah, impressions, yeah, yeah. I'm like, Oh my <laughs> fucking god, it's yeah, so good. perfect. Very good. Yeah. He's a super <laughs> articulate guy, <laughs> Obama. He is extremely articulate. No, but he I mean, came in and said the whole ceremony. Um, his, uh, I forget who it was, but he was standing. He stood at attention. Like, he called attention to orders. Like, the person that was reading the citation, and he stood at fucking attention, which I also thought I was hallucinating. You said Obama stood at attention? Well, yeah. yeah. It, when you when there's an, uh, an award being presented, you stand. Oh, you get up out of bed and, and sit. No, 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 I'm saying oh. anybody in general, like, you, uh, you if right. you're, it's, uh, what is it, to all these presents greetings like it's kind of like the formality the pomp and circumstance if someone's getting recognized for something yeah, yeah. no matter who it is everyone in the room but i mean you think about it uh the president is the commander in chief so he's head of the military so he's got to follow those rules i no, guess no, right yeah. no yeah, yeah and it was you know he, he should he, he should follow those rules yeah. right no i mean that's just like you know anybody no. that's in a leadership position how many people were there that day anything. that got the purple heart there was a, oh, I mean, shit, when I went through there, there was a whole bunch of people that got injured. So now, there's I mean, a lot of people. Is that how it works? Purple Heart is if you get if you get injured in combat. You by, get enemy, by enemy. By enemy. Yeah. Oh, not enemy by, like, fire. friendly you fire. In the military, you don't fucking want. It's called the you enemy marksmanship want, yeah. badge. Right, right, That's right. what we fucking call yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, what is it, the fourth <clears throat> highest? Order? You put it right next to your I got to keep my dick award. <laughs> 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 it's like, uh, oh, no, it's the, it's like the fifth highest, right? Maybe fifth, it's like fifth or sixth or yeah, it's like Medal of Honor is number one, right? Yeah, it's like I purple, feel, I purple feel like heart, bronze star, silver star, cross, or whatever branch in the Medal of Honor. Just I because you said um, enemy fire got hit by enemy fire, I feel like we should take a minute and talk about Pat Tillman. I mean, obviously you know the Pat Tillman story, right? Oh, I mean, what a fucking I know. hero! He was, that guy. He, was, uh, he played for like you guys Felix, don't know who the, the Pat Phoenix Cardinals, Tillman is. right? Look him up, and yep. he decided to. Give up his football career to kind of serve in the military right after 9 11. Incredible right? football player. Was it after 9 11? Is that why yeah. he decided? Yeah. I, w I was actually just having this But killed by friendly fire. Yeah. 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 So I, I know a few people that actually served with him and uh, the the chatter about the type of person he was yeah. is completely legit. Right. Yeah. He was. Wow. Yep. Apparently he, he was all out engaged yep. in being the best person, that That's what best I heard. soldier he could be. His NFL career was. Nothing that he brought with him to the military. Mm. You know, he, he, he stood alone just as a military he, he went, guy. He went in. He worked his way up from the bottom to the top. He did yeah. everything that everybody else did. He took care of his, his brothers in arms. Now, is that right? He got killed by friendly fire? You you know right. about the day, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's... I'm not... I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not a military not, guy, but that's how the story goes, yeah. There's still a whole lot of... Uh, but you... Yeah. Cl clouds that surround the, the mm. story. I'm not, okay. In no way... I'm not going to... At all. Killed by, killed by enemy friendly fire makes it sound a lot worse than it is mm -hmm. uh the, i don't think that he was intentionally it wasn't shot no shot. it no. wasn't no right but i mean it, i mean no. if you're in battle you're in battle and like it's you know happened. some guy shot fortunately yeah it, happened to somebody it, it was like a yeah as, as well known as Pat Tillman. yeah 
Fucking shout out to Phil over there. He don't even have a mic, and he sounds like he's got one of that goddamn baritone man voices. Hey, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. This, these mics pick it up. Yeah. The guy. <laughs> yeah. No, I was legitimately just talking with that um, when I was in Germany. Um, Leroy Petrie was with us. Just got the Medal of Honor um, a few years back. The dude, I didn't even fucking know this until he pulled the shit out of his backpack like the second day of the trip. One, he, he's so fucking humble and genuine. You didn't even fucking know. Wait, Sitting pulled his to, Medal of Honor out of his backpack? Yes, yeah. He, he kept asking, like, occasionally he'd ask, he pat every time we went and spoke to, you know, troops over there, because we were bouncing around the Bavaria region, talking to fucking um, soldiers that were stationed out there. He'd, he'd immediately walk in the room, take it off, and fucking hand it to like, you, and then pass it. To, everyone would fucking get to touch it and wow. look at it. That's just who he was. Like, and he'd come back and be like, hey, whoever was next to him, he's like, hey, can you help me put this on? It's just like buttons on the back, but I held it and I was like, Jesus fucking Christ. And okay. Like it, it was just whatever. So what is it? The Medal of Honor and the, is it the Medal of Honor or the Silver Star that is like one of the most least given out? Medal of Honor. Medal, Medal of Honor. Honor. Yeah, that's yeah. the highest award you can get. Right. That's right. it. Yeah. No, that's. Not often given Dude. to soldiers, correct? No. Yeah, yeah. He, so what happened with that? It, it, this is based off of just what he told me in a very limited fashion and what I read. He picked up a grenade. There was like an ambush or something like that. Opened his hand to go throw it. Blew his hand off. I don't know if it was like before, after, during, whatever the fuck, but he also got shot through both of his thighs. Jesus. And he's still fucking, he was still moving, shooting, communicating. I think, I think, I, I don't know for sure. I think he called in a fucking, some, yeah, he called in a, his goddamn arm's gone. And he's doing, I'm like, this is just, that's the kind of shit that wow. we get fucking trained for. And he just did it, man. And wow. it's fucking insanely it's but your training, you think? I mean, you said <clears throat> when when you said you you, you stepped on the ID and yeah. you just went right into your your yeah, normal training. I, Do you think your training help helps? Like, it, it obviously, you guys practice that shit for a reason. It helps. Non stop. Yeah. yeah. And, and then, then muscle memory is your best friend. Yeah. Because yeah. like, so you're not even thinking about it until it's most, happening. In the most serious and stressful times of your life, mm -hmm. you revert back to your lowest level of training. Your right. body automatically yeah, I I I I, I totally and get you, that. Yes, yeah, you know, you know, just as well as anybody else. So, like, if you tr if you don't train and you don't pound it into your brain, you don't. Pound yeah, it you're not going to naturally do it when it's time to go. Naturally do it when mm -hmm. it's time to time to react. Right. And so, right. like for him, probably his leg blew off and he went right for his eye pack, mm -hmm. looking for that turning. Yeah, no, the turning kit got blown yeah, out. It was, was going like, right. Oh, yeah. that's gone. So ne next oh. move is. Grab, grab my weapon and, and take <laughs> yeah. security. Well, they say the, the military targets that age group because they're the most impressionable, right? The young, out of high well, school. Well, I mean, I'm sure they just don't want fucking old guys like you. Uh, shit in there, you know what I mean? <laughs> well, they take orders well, right? They, and they, it's institutionalization. Yeah. Just like if you went to prison. Well, they're easily mal yeah, malleable. Basic, right. basic training is, is so demeaning for a reason. Yeah. Right? yeah. They want, oh, man. They want it's, to... They want, they don't, yeah. you don't, you're not the high school fucking <laughs> football star. Track star, yeah, yeah. You don't you're matter as a person. Fucking, you're not the home, homecoming king. They want to beat you down now, a little what, bit. What, what year did you go to basic? 98. Has that changed, do you think? Is it still like that, or has no, it changed? It's way different. It's different, yeah. Mm -hmm. Easier for these guys? It gets, I, it uh, gets, I... Easier? This is what I say, yeah, like, yeah, cause, okay, because, like, all right, it, I, I, I've been, I've been miserable. So for me, in 98, <clears throat> I was raised differently. Yeah, mm. I went into a different military. Yeah, so it's just different. Lou, it was diff it can was you different. just they plug that mic in so he can sit and hold it? Yeah. I mean, he's he can sit next to Rory and hold it. He doesn't. It doesn't no, have to be good. on a mic stand. Here, <clears throat> can I put this in the middle? Yeah, I, I, so I don't. I don't know if it's. I don't know if easier or harder. I, personally, I just didn't want Phil on camera because he's a good-looking son of a bitch, and he, uh, he's low. He's right, my competition so, over there. Father Son shirt, by the way. Best fitting shirt on earth. I own some of those. Yo, I bought like six of them the other day. That's the best fucking fitting shirt on earth. Yeah. Every time I wear one, people are like, yo, buy a shirt that fits, motherfucker. I'm like, it does. It fits real good. The buttons are closed. Right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe it, they might be screaming, but yeah. whatever. It's, it's a good shirt. <laughs> now, you guys are all tatted up. You got any tats over there? No. No? No. Uh, no, no. Have man? Oh, I don't know. I, I don't know. <laughs> Shit. I'm like, fuck, you see, like, in Vietnam, they're, like, getting tattoos over there, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't, there's no time for No that purposeful shit. open wounds. Yeah. <clears throat> Hell no. No, that's how you get, like, cellulitis and you fucking... Yeah, yeah. From staph infection. Yeah, on the mats, yeah. man. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You ain't even clean that shit, and you're fucked. Shit. I didn't know there was so much water over there. You, you talk a lot about, f you know, flogging you through the mud and the water, and you think desert when you think of... Do you I, know why? Why? Well, the, so there's the main river that runs down, 
the Army Corps of Engineers actually went there, I think it was like 1950 or something like that, okay. and built a canal system for the Afghan people so that they had some sort of, you know, economy. So what wound up happening, that's where the marijuana fields came in, that's where the poppy fields, uh, the opium uh, came in. Needs water to grow, yeah. With the water. Yeah. So Using they that. flood the fields and everything, and like, so a lot of what we were doing over there was like, hey, you know, take this, you know, corn crop and replace it. But you can't make as much money with corn of as you can with poppies. So yeah. it's just like, oh, it's kind of Shit. redundant, you know? But, like, that's the number one production area of yeah. poppy hmm. in the fucking world. You brought that up earlier. You said yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, and even if you look at Afghanistan on a map, it's literally from here, it's that way. Yeah. yeah. You know? It's not, it's not north, it's not south, it's not any closer to the equator. It's literally almost... Straight east. Is that right? Mm. Yeah. Wow. So, si- so similar yeah, like, similar uh, climate than us or not? Uh, they have the same seasons that we do. I, like, <clears> I, I spent a lot of time in uh, Kabul and it snows. It snows in December. Yeah, wow. It's wow. fucking hot as shit in August. Mm-hmm. It snowed wow. in fucking Iraq when I was there for like the first time in 30 years and they thought it was like the apocalypse. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Afghan- Afghanistan's weather is not much different than here. Hmm. Yeah. Really? I mean, the... the Summers are fucking relentless. There's a, yeah, there's yeah. a little bit more of an extreme in the summer, uh, on the summer. highs, yeah. but, uh, but for the most the shade at one for the most part, well, we they have summer winters. Now, what is, what is your guys' take on? You know, obviously the talk has been over here with all the political candidates pulling our troops out, pulling our troops out. Do you think it reverts right back to what it was as soon as we leave? Yeah, you do. Mm-hmm. That's what I think. Without Again, you're talking about an in drug. Yeah. In I mean, isn't that what happened in Iraq? I mean, we, we, we pulled our people out, yeah. and then they started fighting Iran. I think the Iraq people all, want all us the there, don't they? Is that all the all the lives that we lost? I was just going to say, what is your feeling the, on that? As two guys who served over there that, that were fighting, it almost feels like it was for nothing. Right. Yeah, that was right. One, yeah that was personally for me. That was one of the first cities that I remember hearing about. I think it was like the second city that fell was Ramadi. Okay. Like they, they went back into the fucking ISIS control. Just pull pull that mic a little closer. Cause, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, as, as two guys with some serious personal experience over there, I would think that that has to be disheartening to say the least, but probably would anger you a little bit. And that if we do completely pull out, which who knows if that'll ever happen, but you know, the whole plan has been now for the last four, eight years, whatever, to slowly digress and reduce our presence over there and does it go immediately back to because again you're talking about an indoctrination of a culture you know can you change it you get i I really don't i haven't seen any success you can't you can't kill an ideology right and especially so we're what are we we're a democratic republic here right right over there they're more like I guess on the political spectrum, the government spectrum, you could they're like all the way right. Like they're a, a theocracy. Mm-hmm. Like their government is run off of religion. And it just, it doesn't skew from that very much. Right. The Koran. Yeah. It's, so it just, it's just night and day. And you can't change that. Right. So it's, just, it's too systemic. Right. It's, yeah, it's, it's from birth. Too, right? Yeah. <clears throat> it's, there's, you can't really change that shit at all. You know? If it's ingrained in you from the day you... Sort of like you know you, you but see, but <clears throat> don't you think that there those places are, are definitely more liberal than maybe Iran, right? How so? Is, well, well, how I, so? Because I I, I, Iran, I think, is much more strict than say Afghanistan and Iraq. Or am I wrong? I don't. I don't know. No, they're they're all pretty strict. <clears throat> I think the problem that that, that I just know like I, as far as I've I've been, I've been, I've been okay. I've been to Bahrain. I've been to Abu Dhabi. I've been to Dubai. Those places are definitely much more liberal than I, I would imagine. I would imagine. Those oh, whoa, 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 hold up, hold up. We're the we're rated 156 pod 148 podcast in. Where, where was it? Lou did some research. Jesus that Christ. Christ. With 148th? Oh, bro, we're killing the game over there in did Dubai it somewhere. Go up? And at we're what killing point it. Did it go up? Was it when I moved from that seat to this? <laughs> <laughs> we're rated 148 on Apple Podcasts in the Society and Culture Chart in United Arab Emirates. Yeah. Yeah, UAE, baby. Yeah. That's where I won that world title. Come there's on. A, there's only 149 <laughs> over there. Yeah. We're 148. 
<laughs> but I know, like, it's, it's, like it's, it's, Bahrain it's, it's, is right next to Saudi they're Arabia. They're a little bit more westernized. Over yeah, there. and like Saudi Arabia, you can't have an alcoholic drink, so they all go to Bahrain for, to like. That's like uh, their Las well, Vegas. That's part of the, mo- the Muslim right. culture is, is you're not supposed to drink. Right. right. Really. Right. Okay. But I'll tell you what, in I've public. been in some yeah, clubs in Bahrain, <laughs> and they're getting down, boy. Some of my Terps in Afghanistan. So it's uh. Yeah, we drank with tribal leaders at night. Like yeah. Yeah. as long as it wasn't open and like yeah. you know, it exists. So all in all, with all the bad experiences, you had some good experiences as well. You, you you'd say. I mean, for me personally, any of my bad experiences are good now. Yeah, they yeah. really are, and that's that's not just perspective. Like, I mean, that's the one word that that. You said it earlier. It's perspective. It's, it's, it's how you want to look at things. You can look at them a couple different ways. There's a story I think my dad told me when I was a kid or something. You've, you've probably all heard it. Two, it's a made-up okay. story, but it's got some meaning to it. Two uh, twin boys, right, raised in the same household with an alcoholic, abusive father, right? Beat their mother, beat them. They both grow up, right? One becomes a huge success, CEO of a major company, the other one follows in his dad's footsteps and becomes just a, an abusive, alcoholic dad, just, just like his dad was. And someone said to both of them, why did you turn out the way you did? And they both had the exact same answer, because I watched my dad. Yeah. So That's it's perspective. Exactly it. You know what I mean? All right, one decided to be exactly like him, right. one decided to be Correct. exactly not like him. How is that not like the, the theme of this whole whole. It is. Yeah, good. yeah like, sort of is. Yeah. Like the PTSD. And, well, I mean, and, and I, the do, gauging of how how one traumatic experience, mm-hmm. your traumatic experience, and his traumatic experience are all different, but the same at the same time. Right. It's how you interpret. Well, it. it's yeah. how you climbed out of it too, you know, and, and and the perspective you got from it, um, brought you to where you are today. It's also what crossed your path in life. You yeah. know what I mean? Like I, I didn't sign up for the military, so your experience would have never crossed my path mm-hmm. in life. Along with personal mindset, you know, we all have different mindsets. We all take away from things differently. And some people are just, you know, you talked about it on Rogan, you know, just the, the, the will and the ability of the mind to power through certain things. I mean, people are just built so differently, especially men, I think, with that sort of stuff. You know, women are, are you oh, know. I know plenty of women that are just, they surprise the shit. Well, right. But I I'm think saying, women I, might be tougher than men, dude. In, in a lot of ways. Yeah. yeah. They might be yeah. tougher. Men, like mentally. Yeah. Physically tougher. or mentally? Mentally. mentally. No, physically, I mean, they can't, you know. Uh, there's bro. a matter. There's a reason that like, men don't men lift more weight. Both. But uh, physically, I'm, mentally. I'm back out there in the dating pool. I might disagree. <laughs> but as far as physically or mentally? <laughs> they flip out on me a lot. Well, I mean, <laughs> I can dumb, see why. some dumb shit. That might be something you got to deal with. That might be an inner thing you might be needing to deal with, buddy. <laughs> but I mean, women—they got to deal with pregnancy, and I, I see the women fighters too. You ever see them getting arm bars? I'm like, oh my god, how's this girl yeah, not yeah, tapping? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, fuck you, bitch, I'm not tapping. That's <laughs> true. Honestly, you know, I, I don't. You guys are UFC fans. Yeah. I, I don't want to backstep away from your story, but I just, I just heard about Frankie Edgar today. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Dana said he would never have women in, right? That was his original <laughs> comment. Never had him. And I thought when he had them in, obviously, you know, shout out to Ronda Rousey. She paved the road for that. But I thought mm, I might be a little disappointed here. I have not been disappointed with that women's division at all, man. Oh, hell no. At they bring all. It. They bring it. They, they bring bad it. Yeah, bitches over there. Sure. Dana just said that because he didn't think they'd be successful. Now he's like, oh, wait a minute. I can make some money off <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, think, I think I like that. Yeah. <laughs> he's not stupid. But yeah, I mean, it's, uh, there's like two women fights on 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 the main cards now. Yeah, you know, they're, they're yeah. definitely a a big part of it. So, and how about the military? It, it, there's lots of women in the military now. Yep. How is that? Is that weird? I mean, you guys, you guys don't are you in the same barracks? Got I got to be honest with you. Uh, I was in the infantry for me too. Never saw them really. Nine really, years. you didn't see many. No. I oh. don't, they're not in, Are they in di- separate so units? I was, so, so I was oh, yeah. in there. I hear they make great pilots. Yeah. I think they're starting to be integrated into combat arms. Okay. But when I was in, they weren't in combat arms. So I, to be honest, I never worked with when them. When you say weren't in, weren't allowed in? Or just yeah, weren't, yes, you didn't see them? Weren't, weren't allowed in. Weren't allowed in. Okay. So they great, made great pie. No, how pi- sexist. Pilot, bro. you fucking dick. sexist. See what he's trying to he, do? They made great pie. See what he's trying to do? I see. See? We did, we did work with them well, <laughs> in Iraq and Afghanistan. We did need uh, female searchers and interpreters yeah. and, people, and people to talk to them. So we did bring women out with us. What do you mean by female it, searchers? It, so it was called uh, the FET team or lionesses, their female engagement team. And okay. the whole idea behind it was that they would engage with other Local females because mm. they don't want they they uh, they can't mess with guys right but the I mean, problem they is, can't is talk to like guys the females can't talk to us right uh, right even if it's a female right because they 
Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. If we're in a, if we're in a situation and we you know everybody is everybody's suspect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're, we can't sure. just go over and start patting down the women. Yeah. Because that's going to create. So that's cool that you guys actually respect their chaos. Right? They're, because they're religious. Yeah. Yeah. We try, yeah. We really do try like every. At every turn to See, I'm sure like the 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 stigma out there is that the U.S. troops they don't give a fuck, da da da. But you guys are actually respecting their culture. Well, yeah. Listen, and and there I'm sure there are some. But, no, I'm sure. You know, yeah, it's kind of like always a bad batch. It's kind of like the war on cops right now. I I mm-hmm. believe, and I'm sure I'll probably take some heat for this. That the majority of cops are good cops. I I would think that you guys were there. You were the boys over there. The majority of our our soldiers. Were probably good soldiers. I'm sure there were some bad dudes doing some bad shit. I'm sure. Yeah, no, it, it's you, you get you put two hundred thousand people in one place. Right. No matter how you hand pick them, right. Somebody's gonna be a fucking correct. Shit yeah, 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 right. Know? It's just a, the the, pick, the, pick, the pick, law of averages, right? You could, right. You could, you could do all the research in the world and right. pick the the hundred best people you know. Right. Somebody is gonna be the worst person in that room. Yep. yep. All right. Yeah. Just what level is it, are they gonna be? There's only two of us in this room, and, and him and I are in here, and I'm always <laughs> the best one. So he's a fucking asshole. He's the tallest. It's about the fucking only thing he's got on me. <laughs> Better years. Better years, motherfucker. Dead again with the years, man. <laughs> They're dog years. They're dog years. You want to touch them? <laughs> I did once. I'll never do it again. Yeah, no, that's, uh, I guess that's part of, uh, that's another misconception about, like, people in the military, is they just think that we, we don't care about the area that we're in or the culture. But, I mean, it's our best interest yeah, to, to ha- walk, to mm-hmm. respect, you, you respect another person's house. And you have to be aware of, of, of the situation you're in, I imagine. You're not going to go there and just try to... Yeah, these pe- like, smoke, yeah in other words, these people already don't like you. Yeah, they already want to get you. Get, you're going to go in there and be disrespectful, then that's just like adding like, to the right, fire. Shoot this motherfucker. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the best way to ga- gather intelligence is not to buy, not by hurting everybody's feelings and disrespecting everybody's Correct. By blowing them up. And, and yeah. You go in there and you make friends with people. You, know? you sit just, down, you have tea. You, you, so you everybody doesn't done. get pissed off. He said broing them up. That's a Jersey thing, not blowing them up. <laughs> yeah. it's a jer- we say broing a lot <laughs> here in Jersey. It's <laughs> so like, as alaykum. Hey, come on. A conversation. Yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's the same with everything. You, it's right. like negotiating a contract. Mm-hmm. Right, it's right, all right. the same thing. You don't go in there and you're like, Correct, I'm yeah. the fucking baddest motherfucker right. in the room. You do what I do. You go in there and you... And you, you take it back to the Roadhouse days. Like say, you, you the get movie more, Roadhouse? You get more... Uh, what, what did he say? <laughs> Patrick Swayze. He said the best way to get somebody out the door is not force them out the door. You talk them out the door if you're a good bouncer. You know what I mean? So communication, man. Same thing. Yeah. Communication is key. Get more... What they say? You get more with honey than you do with... Vinegar. Vinegar? Yeah. Yeah, you, honey. Any any interaction, even back here, like humility and respect, even if that person doesn't necessarily deserve it right out the gate, right. you at least have to try. You gotta you gotta give that because if that that's how I mean that golden rule thing that you get taught as a kid, that's ultimately true, man. But that's really good to hear because I feel like you know you hear, yeah yeah we, we I feel like you got you soldiers get a bad rap, you know. Everybody gets a bad rap. Well, I think that I I do Hollywood. Yeah, Hollywood does that. Yeah. TV to give people a bad rap. TV to talk shit. Right. I was actually thinking about this before we came over here. Like, what if the news was all good news? (laughs) That's Mm -hmm. a good. Yeah. Right. Like, what if the news was all good news? Do you think there would be so much separation in Dubai? No, there wouldn't. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, But all we do is we just we talk about the bad. Yeah. I mean, shit. The news. The news. What the news is. The news is all negative. You know, my kid, my my wife, every night at night, she's in bed with my kid. She pulls up. Positive news and reads positive news stories. Because these kids, I mean, even the kids, they hear fucking bad. My comes on, goes, oh, did you hear this? Did you hear that? Like, no, I don't want you hearing that stuff. You don't need to hear that stuff. Here's something good. Yeah. That's what it actually used to be. Right. It used to be way, way back in the day, hundreds of years ago. It used to be like current events kind of shit. You know, that, you yeah. know what that reminds me of? Yeah, Anchorman. Well, yeah. Squirrel on the ski. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> the cat. His first assignment <laughs> with a cat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Or, or Ling Ling the yeah. panda at the zoo. <laughs> you say that's what it used to be hundreds yeah. of years ago. I, I don't know. Did it or is that's it just what I, that's what is I've it just ratings? Request, People yeah. want ratings now, so they everything is like, so shock value. Evil, yeah. evil always existed, right? It always, yeah, but true. it was yeah. brought. Now it's just overinflated to yeah, some degree. Not, you know what I mean? There's not more evil, uh, right? It, there, it always existed, and, then, mm-hmm. and right. this is something that I talk about around Halloween with people. Right? You know, where we got like. Uh, uh, Trunk or treats, and, and yeah, like yeah, yeah. Pop the trunk and shit. Yeah, there's, I do that with my there's kids. The same amount of sexual predators out there today Correct. as there were 100 percent 20 years ago right. when I was mm-hmm. banging on doors. You, my yeah. mom yep. had no idea where I was. We walk past them yeah. every day in the grocery store, and you don't know it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I never got a razor blade right. in in my chocolates. Yeah, where's all the drugs? Yeah, yeah. 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 
I don't know anybody that right, wants to like throw some fucking weed and in if, a goddamn and if, like. And no. if somebody was gonna <laughs> drug me and drug kids or throw a razor blade and, and a candy, yeah. they're gonna fucking pack their car full of shit right. and bring yeah. it to the trunk or treat. Right. Yeah, yeah it's so, no. no. You're not saving anybody. You know, now kids just don't have to walk. Yeah, I, I think it's it's candy. it's you know uh, we live in a in a competition world where yeah. especially with news everybody's competing with each other and what sells. I mean, listen, and we're all guilty of it. You, we drive by accidents, right? Everybody, that, that's where all the rubberneckers come from. You go to a hockey game, what does everybody want to see? Everybody wants to see a fight. Like, you watch NASCAR, a lot of people don't tune in to see who wins. A lot of people tune in for the wrecks. Like, we're all a little guilty of turning our heads for that sort of thing. But now it's become competitive. Yeah. It's been, com- it's become competitive of marketing it. Marketing, you know, the dirt. Everything's so fast. Social media is so quick. Like, any, that, every story is every 15 seconds. Yeah. Used to be like, what, 15 minutes of fame? Yeah. Now it's not like that. It's like 15 seconds of fame. I used to and then there's the next minutes. one. Now I'm about 15 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> well, I do got to say, though, is that anytime I see, like, stories like that, I, 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 I really do see people were wanting to, like, help or, like, stop some kind of, you know, something bad going on. Like, I think people do want to help. They do, I, but I, I but, it's a lot more common now. I I, but I feel like the people that say the outlandish stuff and the the shock value stuff get more attention, and that's why yeah. they people people that don't that aren't able to help they rather just go that route because they know they're going to get that attention. Yeah, was that, was that a, a, a nonchalant uh, reference to like Mr. Rogers? <laughs> more Howard Stern, I think. <laughs> oh, no, didn't Mr. Rogers say like in every tragedy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you look for the people that are helping. Yes, to, to yeah. find the good in the world. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. always, that's that's exactly it. Yeah, every, every every tragedy you can always find light in any situation, I guess. Right? right. You, you try to. I mean, like, look for the helpers. I mean, I guess you're you bring it back to you. Silver linings. Rory, right? you brought yeah. you you found a silver lining in your whole situation. Well, that's what I was gonna say about combat before. Was it's not what you think it. It's not the most violent. I mean, it is a violent profession. It's a violent environment. I'm going to argue, and I do argue this, it is the most pure expression of love that I've ever seen. Because of the... Because of how you just... The person that's next to you. you right. You, the level you're willing to go to for so other you people. You put your life down. I was going to say yeah. earlier when I was sitting in this chair. Yeah. We were trying to keep you off camera, <laughs> motherfucker. You're a good looking guy, okay? I'm single now, okay? Uh, you guys were talking something about... Um, the, the political views and and, yeah. and what what people are fighting for over there, and a lot of the times, by the time we get over there, like we're in the military, the the guys in the the army, the marines, these guys that are on on the ground, the front lines, we're not we're not political guys. Right. No. Like maybe a handful are, are political guys. Well, most so of you are too, there, they're almost too over, young to be right. We we get over there, and now it's not it's not about us. It's about like. I gotta bring Rory home. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like I, I, I met, it, I met his, I met his wife and his kids. Yeah. He's gotta yeah. come home. I gotta bring my, I gotta bring my brothers and my sisters home. Right, yeah. right. Like, and I'm just, I'm gonna fight whoever the fuck I have to right. in order to, to help get them, to get them, them home. Back. Yeah, and and it doesn't become about right. oil the agenda, or the money agenda that, that you're really there for. Yeah, or or nine eleven. It right. doesn't. It's not about that anymore. It, it really isn't. But I'm well, sure that's kind of, but that's that's gotta be that's gotta be. I don't want to uh, fucking die. I don't want him to fucking die. Right. I don't want him to fucking die. But I'm sure that's kind of how they they mold you guys. I mean, think about it. They've think, had th- hundreds th- of years to do it to mold. Yeah, the perfect just think about it. Like yeah. every agenda that they sent you over for, they try to use your camaraderie to make them achieve their goal. I, you know I, what I mean? Hoorah! And, and it works. Yeah. Right, it yeah. works a hundred percent. I get it, man. I get no, it. You know, no I got. Better, there's no better way than to build a fucking family and then put them in war. And then, t- no well, matter what the what the reason is, let's back it up here a little. You bit. know, I, 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 I kind of let's back it up a little bit to you. We had Marlon Moraes in what a week ago. Mm-hmm. You you said I'll never fight him. He's my brother. I will never fight him. I mean, it, it it's it's in all of us. It's, yeah. You know, it's, oh yeah. Oh yeah. You know when when you share those. I mean, obviously, what you guys share is another level from what I share with just guys I train with. Yeah. But it is it is another level because you guys are life and death, and that's totally different. But even so, I could just see it with just the guys I train with. So I can imagine how deep it goes with you guys. Right, yeah. You know. Com- camaraderie. Is, yeah. Is, hey, I've seen I, you read reading the book. Uh, I, I, I just got it. I didn't start reading it. I read a couple pages of The Jungle. And that's like how he ta- he talks about that, how the, the tribalism, like that's like one of the biggest things you guys probably miss. You can't read. 
from <laughs> that's probably one of the biggest things you guys miss though when you're out of the military is you you miss that camaraderie that's what every you, you, uh, who i seen uh i was watching ridiculousness with my kids that's their favorite show and brian erlacher was on there and he was like saying what do you miss what do you miss he's like and i always hear every athlete talk about this which i don't know we i would uh, come across this as a mix, as a martial artist but Professional football players, basketball players, baseball players, they miss the camaraderie my with the, with their people. They miss they miss hanging answer, out with your boys. My first answer whenever anybody asks me what I miss about the military. Just hanging out with your boys. Camaraderie. camaraderie yeah. They, they don't even have to be my boys. Yeah, yeah some right. Of those, some of those people I wouldn't go to a fucking bar with. Yeah. yeah. But I'll train with them. Yeah. I'll work with them. I'll right. fight with them. Right. And is that is that based on solely respect for what they do and what they represent? They're in the same boat right. as you, right? right. right. They're right. right. so much. All, we're all in, in common. the same fucking right. shitty situation. Right. Yeah. And the only way to make it this better turn is like to that not, for any of you is to not hate each other. Right. Right. You know, like right. It, right. It, it, do you find any of that over, especially overseas? I'm sure you see it in boot camp. I'm sure. Do you see rivalry? Do you see, you know, the 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 chest bumping that you would see in a normal civilized when you put a bunch of guys in the same? Do you see that when you're when you're overseas and you're all you're there, you're surviving, and you're fighting. Between inside. units, yes. Well, yeah, okay. Between, between yeah, people. That's like sports teams. Uh, yeah. More fighters, yeah, yeah, yeah. man. But okay. if, 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 even if it is inter, like, in your, like, say, your squad yeah. or something like that, it's fucking short-lived. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's... Because you, you know what's you really... You fucking fight. Right, right, right. You, you right. fucking hear, At like, stake. Like, boom, boom, and then you go back, yeah. and you realize that, you know, we have more important shit to fucking worry right, about. Right, right, yeah. right, right. And in the military, you know, there's... Even, even if it... There is like a real rival rivalry between two people. It it's a it's a it's an environment where you could just be like, you guys got a fucking problem. Yeah, go fight. Right, right, yeah. And right. you'll get the other the other ten eleven people in the squad uh, yeah. or, or that section yeah. or whatever to stand around and w you'll p put those two motherfuckers yeah. in there, fight it out. Don't you believe though? There's a large portion of society that just doesn't understand that. I totally get that. Yeah, like right. I could, I could, I, I, I could. Fight it out. One yeah. guy wins, one guy loses. Exactly. Fucking shake your hand. You got a fifty-fifty go shot. Go it's in. Like, it's like a bunch of drunk Irishmen. Right. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Punch yeah. you in the face. You punch me in the face. I fall down. You'd be surprised when people have never gotten to a fight in their life. Though. I, that, that's, that's a, a yeah, that that's a big problem. Me. <laughs> Well, I guess you have to meet certain people. You realize, yeah, oh, shit, maybe most people haven't gotten fights. I mean, you, you can tell who's gotten punched in the fucking face, man. Uh, yeah. and one, I think everybody should get punched in the yeah, face. Yeah, I think so, too. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Just to realize that it's, it's not that bad. Exactly. Right. It's, it's not, not bad. that bad. It's like, oh, fuck. All right, all right, I can handle this. Yeah. I'm good. It's whatever. <laughs> yeah, no, it's... um, That camaraderie is actually a huge part, too, why I know me personally, had, you know, I had a hard time with the transition process. And it's actually coming to the forefront. That's a huge reason. It's not necessarily anything that we experienced in combat that is the big, big factor. It's the getting ripped out of that element. That because you can't situation. find it in civilian life, right? That's exactly. Because right. civilian is kind of like a dog eat dog yeah, world. They're not is. necessarily yeah. like very, you know, dangerous. Right. But they can be fucking vindictive and malicious yeah. in a lot of areas. Yeah. So th there's not lo there's not the loyalty. There's not right. the like. Say like a hypothetical scenario: Someone comes into a fucking workplace and like is a disgruntled employee and starts shooting the place up. Yeah. It's a worst case scenario, right? You're not gonna see everyone rushing towards that guy to stop him. Mm -hmm. They're not. You're not gonna see people running and like helping. It, it, not nine times out of ten, you're gonna see a lot of people just scattering around. Yeah. Pages, man. Right. They're just gonna. They're gonna pop, and, and that's that's kind of the the problem that we have when we come back. Because that's not. But you, but you know what? There's also there's other there's other factors also. So yeah, like, that's just one factor. Of you know, in, 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 in like in in the civilian world, Ooh, shit. people's most motivating or driving factor, it, <laughs> at, at least in my experience, is like success, money, right? Make you know, right, right, th right, right. that's not a thing in the mm -hmm. military. Right. Nobody fucking makes any money. Right, right, fucking right, broke. Right, right. Dude, I was you on. Know, so it's a, it's a, it's a good point. It's a, it's a good point, man. It's a good point. It's a you know like. Who's tougher than who? Well, but not like only the, not only that. Day, it's all situational. Well, not only that. Because we all have had the there's, same. Training. There's two things I would think: money, good point. I didn't even think of that. And women, you said there wasn't even any. Like you're not you're not over there bumping chest to yeah, you know I compete know. for women because it's yeah. not even an option. Yeah. yeah. You know, so it's you 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 have there's, each other. That's what you have. There's, there's when when we're over there, mm -hmm. there's nothing right. that we're fighting for except to come home alive. Right. 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 Like. Right. No, it's literally any, who's next any, to you. anybody anybody worth fighting for or anybody worth fighting next to is not out to get awards or medals. Fuck no. right. 
And and nobody ever thinks of those things. Right. You, yeah, you don't right. think of those things when you're over. No, there. you just yeah. think about survival. Get home safely. Yeah. Strictly by accident. Yeah. Silver Star, Bronze, Bronze Star, Navy Cross, Medal of Honor. It's all by accident. Yeah. yeah. Nobody nobody has ever like this. This is it. This yeah. is my opportunity. Right. right. Yeah. Medal of Honor. Like, Everyone's no, trying to survive. Go charge yeah, 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 yeah. that fucking machine gun nest. Yeah. 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 Nobody nobody thinks that. They're just like, oh fuck, everybody's right. in danger. I'm gonna go run over there and kill that motherfucker. Right. Right. And whatever happens, happens. Yeah. You know, it's 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 all instinctual. It's yeah. all very Neanderthal. Yep. Yeah. And how did how, what's the correlation with you guys? How'd you meet? I know you, um, Dana Lynn Bailey, who I follow, I followed for years. Rob, they own uh, Warrior. What what is the name of the gym? Uh, uh, Warhouse Gym. Warhouse Gym. You're you're affiliated with Warhouse Gym, correct? Uh, well, I'm not affiliated with them. I'm just friends with Rob and Dana. Okay, but you sponsor something that happens at Warhouse Gym, no? So we put together a, a veterans outreach workout okay. every year. Okay. And uh, that's actually not how we met. Fun. Oh. <laughs> okay. So this this is a pretty funny story. I met Rory. It used to be. He's a bar. <laughs> I met Rory at uh, I was what is drinking it? by myself. Was it the Asbury Park Hotel? Yeah, yeah. That Asbury, was it. Asbury Park Hotel on nope. uh, right, Marine yeah. Corps birthday. No shit. Yeah. And I had just. <laughs> <laughs> this was like very, very like it was. It wasn't too long after one of our veterans outreach workouts, but so I had I had found his profile because a friend of mine, Christian Coronado, is friends. With I'm friends with Christian. Yeah. I used to work out with Christian twenty years ago. Yeah, yeah. Great, Chris, Christian, before he was the massive motherfucker that he is now. Yeah. He's yeah. Christian asked me, he was like, you know who Rory Hamill is? I was like, no. He's <laughs> like, oh, he's a he's a wounded vet. So I started following him. Yeah, and. uh Turns out a friend, a mutual friend of ours, invited me to the Asbury Park Hotel for the Marine Corps birthday, and we get there, and Rory's there, and so I start fucking with, with him right away. <laughs> and I was like, "Hey man, what's your name?" And it was Rory, and I was like, "Oh my god, are you fucking Rory Hamill?" <laughs> He's like, "Yeah, man." I was, I was like, "I follow you on Instagram." No, you said that. I'm like, who, "Shut up, who are you?" Like, <laughs> I was giving, I was giving him the fucking hardest time. I was like, "Yo, I follow you on Instagram, bro. Your stories are awesome." <laughs> and he, and he, he was there with some a bunch of other people, and they were all like laughing at me and laughing yeah, at him, yeah. and he was super fucking embarrassed. That's and funny. then, like a couple weeks later. We we got to talk. So you're you're a local guy. You're a Jersey guy. Oh yeah, I live okay. in Point. Yeah. I know you said you grew up there. I didn't know if you moved away, but you're still uh, in Point. I, I live in Point. I okay. grew up in Teaneck. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so we, uh, then I put this vow together again another year, and he I was going to reach out to him to come to it, and he actually reached out to me before I got a chance to, and uh, we've just been communicating ever since, and and turned out that since we live so close. We started training together about yep. once or twice a week. Right on. Um, you know, life gets in the way. Training so, how? Yeah, we at both, the gym. We both, at we the both gym. started school okay. the last yeah. few months, so we kind yeah. of. By the way, guys, Phil's happily married. He's got four kids. He's <laughs> off the market. I'm single. <laughs> <laughs> it's married. Friday, See the ring? Huge ring. Friday, He's just a little off camera. The ring is just a little off camera. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, man. Don't hit him up in his DMs. Don't give out your Instagram, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> What's your Instagram? <laughs> It's just uh, Dore Philip M at Instagram. You gotta say that slower. We got dumb listeners. <laughs> D O R D O R E <laughs> Philip with one L M at Instagram. You, you almost said Hotmail. <laughs> he did. He did. He did. He did. <laughs> That's his email. So I hit him up if you want to email him too. <laughs> yeah, it is. Because I'm not that smart. So <laughs> Neither am I, brother. Neither I am I. You're on the right show, then. You're on the right show. <laughs> Speak for yourself, <laughs> Roger. <laughs> yeah, Frankie's a genius. He almost choked on an ice cube 20 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know, boys. Uh, I could go for another hour, but um, what, 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 what we haven't covered. Any stories you want to share with us? Anything you want to tell? Yeah, anything at uh, Rob and Dana's or? Uh, so Rob and Dana and I are putting together our sixth veterans outreach workout at the Warhouse Gym in Reading, Pennsylvania. Our our date is scheduled for June sixth, and great so, people, great Saturday. gym, legendary gym. I'd love it. I'd love it for yeah. everybody to show up. It is a military, civilian, LEO. First responder friendly event. We have giveaways, prizes, and it's a fucking really good time. It's it's. So, is there a gym near their house? Because they they basically live on a farm, they no? Live in Montana. 
Oh. Warehouse Gym is in Reading, Pennsylvania. Wait, they live in Montana? Because I always see goats and fucking sheep, and they live on a farm, basically, right? Okay. They used to live in Reading. Uh, They opened their first gym there. Okay. And they moved to Montana. Gotcha. They still have the gym. Gotcha. Good people, anyway, guys. Mm -hmm. It's an awesome event. We had probably, I would say, 2,000 people show up last year. We had a, a crazy guest list. I think yeah. I was invited to that by Carver. Carver asked me to come out to that. Yeah, and, was yeah, yeah, he yeah, was there. Car- Carver was there. I, I, I had another engagement or whatever. I couldn't make it or I don't know what it, it was, was. But it was, uh, I mean, we had uh, Jay, Jay, Jay Cutler yeah. was there. Julian yeah. Smith was there. Oh. Uh, Matt Benson was there. Brooke Entz was there. Brooke Entz, yeah. It, it, we had. I would come just to stare at Brooke Rudy. Entz. Yeah, Rudy. we had Rudy Raz. Rudy Raz was there. Yeah. Fucking infamous Rudy Raz. Rudy, Rudy. Wow. Yeah, from uh, Generation Kill. If you guys don't know who Rudy Rez is, you're, you're missing fucking, out. You yeah. fucking know. <laughs> He's a beautiful but, uh, man. Hi, Rudy. Yeah, man, it's a good, it's a good <laughs> event. We we uh, we usually take we we pick three charities, five hundred one c three charities that we donate all the money to. And, That's uh, great. We do we do a lot of research. So there at there. at at the gym, there's lifting comps. There's what 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 goes on during that time, or it's more uh, of so a meet and greet so type thing. We have thing. a prescribed workout. It's usually uh, 21 exercises, 21 reps of each exercise to represent the 21, 21 people that, suicides yeah, that yeah. occur every day. So you do that, Frankie? Yeah, the push it, the push it, it's an open gym, and it's a it's a really good time, man. That's awesome, man. With two thousand people there, and June June six, June six, June six, and yep. and for the public, the people that want to know, you can just show up and buy tickets there. Or how does yep. that work? Yeah, so buy we're tickets online. We're working on uh, setting up a system where you can buy tickets uh, prior to the event, but you can always just show up and buy at the door. Cool. Rory, anything? Any engagements coming up? Any speaking engagements? Anything you want to talk about? Uh, I mean, outside of a few small ones, which I mean isn't open to the public. Um, anytime that. I'm going to be hopping in front of any audience and speaking. I usually announce it on my social yep. media or my website. Well, follow him, guys. Got a great, great, very inspirational uh, Instagram. I don't, are you on any other social media platforms? Uh, Facebook. It's Facebook. You know, Rory Hamill or Corporal Rory Hamill. You can find him. Search the name. I'm sure it'll come up. Look for the one legged asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Well, hey, thanks you guys for coming, man. I really enjoyed talking to you, picking your brain, and yeah, hearing you. hearing that uh, other lifestyle, man. You know, yeah. for for some you know average Joes like us, you don't know we don't know what it's like. Most people don't know what it's like. They just hear, it, like you said, for movies and stuff. So to get your insight was really cool. Um, you know, sharing your your stories too with us is uh, is right. awesome, man. That that takes a lot of balls to do that. Yeah. Um, which you still, but have. I mean, it's yeah, which you still have, yes. <laughs> but uh, I mean. You're helping a lot of people, like you said. More you know? so than you know, Rory. Yeah. More so you than know. you know. Myself included in that. So. Yeah, for sure. Phil, thank you for your service as well. I wasn't. I, yeah. We didn't get a lot of Phil's backstory. Phil came as a guest of Rory's. I was trying to set up the fourth mic, but I realized Phil was far too good looking to have on this fucking show because he was, <laughs> you know, he's a local guy and I didn't want to compete with him. So we kept him <laughs> off air. No, seriously. In all tr- reality, I couldn't get the mic set up in time. But uh, another, uh, you know, military guy as well. So much respect to him. Yeah, and thank you. Stay quiet as long as I could. <laughs> yeah, glasses, three glasses of whiskey. And yeah, yeah, I'll get yeah, you. Yeah. I'll get you. <laughs> Thanks. So, hey, do we need to clap again? No. <laughs> I, I really, thank, pre- thank I really you guys appreciate for it. Having us. No, yeah, yeah nice. thanks. Yeah, we'll do it again too. We'll definitely yeah. do it again. Yeah, we'd love yeah. to have you boys back on, man. No doubt. Yeah. We're done. getting up, uh, up and rolling. This is episode eight, nine, nine. nine yeah, we're rocking and rolling, man. It's starting to really get some traction now. Yeah. So, very much appreciate you guys. Thank you for coming on. Carver. Thank you, yeah. you Carver. Carver's, Carver's coming, yeah. Or not, I already talked Car- to Carver and I <laughs> did a we did a twelve hour road trip together. The to main twelve hours up, twelve hours back, and you want to talk about an interest? That's going to be a four hour episode, bro. Yeah, because okay. that guy, he can go, he can go. dude. <laughs> I am telling, and Louie knows him as well, but. An eccentric fucking dude with great stories. Yeah. Sort of like Rogan knows a shitload about a lot of fucking yeah. things that are just random. I'm, yeah, I'm excited yeah, to have Carver on. I feel like he's a little bit too smart. To have yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I can't even engage with him sometimes on some things because he's I just, just... laugh and smile and yep. take another hit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he's into that worldly shit, too. He likes to experiment a little bit with... Uh, you know, uh, psychedelics and uh, but mm. good dude served our country. Also a disabled vet. Carver coming soon. March. Carver, you better not lie to me. You said you were coming on in March, motherfucker. Well, I mean, you called him out now. Yeah, <laughs> I'm calling you out on air. He told me this morning he's coming. Is he? Yeah. Cool, cool. Let's go. Yep. Cool. Thank you, boys. Right, Appreciate it. Thank you. Respect. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Good time. Good goes. Good goes, <laughs> gentlemen. <laughs>